Stars, Taylor Kitsch, told us what we can expect. And, of course, we can't get enough of all things Minions around here, so we're going to show you our chat with Steve Carell. And then later, we're honoring the legendary Harrison Ford as he celebrates his 80th birthday. We've got a cool throwback selection that you're going to definitely want to see coming up in a little bit as well. It's Harrison Ford talking about Star Wars when he was here back in 1977. All that coming up, but first, here's today's pop start headlines. Uh, we're going to start with a great story. No, we're going right here. There you go. Taylor Hawkins, this is an incredible video I'm about to show you. The late drummer received a very, very special tribute during a recent Laguna Beach, California block party. That's because Taylor Hawkins' 16-year-old son, Shane, honored his dad, Foo Fighter drummer, with a cover of the band's emotional anthem, My Hero. Shane played with the California-based rock band, The Alive. This was during a 4th of July party out there on the West Coast. And new videos from that show are going viral. Take a look. I mean, that's a pretty cool moment yeah. there, seeing Shane, 16, rocking out on the drum kit, especially to that song, mm -hmm. yeah. There Goes My Hero, oh. in honor of his dad. Next up, Tanya Tucker, the country music icon, getting the Hollywood treatment in a new documentary called The Return of Tanya Tucker. Fellow Grammy winner Brandi Carlisle is executive producing the project, which premiered at this year's South by Southwest Film Festival, and a new teaser for the documentary is giving a sneak peek at how Carlisle pushed Tanya back into the spotlight for a monumental career comeback. I have loved Tanya Tucker since I was eight years old. Here we go. Tanya's voice is in all of us that sing country music, and it's time for us to do an about face and recognize that. Randy, Randy, hi. hi. I feel like I know you. I want this record to be a renaissance period in her life. So I love that song. I'm getting chills on my legs. It's about the influence that you've had, young people and their longing for understanding where their music came from. To be able to leave behind something. And I guess music is, you know, the gift I, I am. I mean, I don't know Tanya's story, but that documentary, th that teaser does it for me. I, yeah. I'm interested yeah. in that. I, I want to know more about it. I think every young country music star will point to Tanya Tucker and say it's because of her. Yeah. She's that person. Well, that's yeah. cool. The return of Tanya Tucker is expected to hit theaters this fall. We'll get to hear more about that when the one and only Brandi Carlisle stops by our plaza for the summer concert series. That is coming up in September. More on that a little bit later, but there you can put it on the calendar. Next up, Stranger Things. Fans of the latest season continue to rock the Billboard charts with the show's 80s soundtrack. Thanks to the final episode, Volume 2, this metal classic has gone to the top of the charts. and then I smash the can on my head, going back to... It's I like headbangers ball no, here. No, no, no. My 13-year-old son, we were on vacation last week. He spent most of it binge-watching Stranger Things to get to this finale. You, uh, He's got Kate Bush on his soundtrack. Oh, I like that. That song, that's the title track to Metallica's Master of Puppets. That's right. a record. It came out in March of 86. And what's okay. happening See, to it? And now the young people now. are like, we love it. It. See, we're, we're up to the 80s. Carson, Metallica's best song or second best song? Master uh, of Puppets, what do you think? I would say, I, I can't answer that. I'd say best song because... Well, ask Coda, she best. loves heavy yeah, metal. You know, I, love I mean, it's a better. Metallica, yeah. Iron Maiden, I love, Maiden, every, I love she every it. genre. But hold on, here, here's the numbers on it. Okay. Since the new episode came out, let's just give you a little bit of uh, it, uh, episodes. Less than two weeks ago, streams for that song, Master yeah. of Puppets, have gone up 650% uh -huh. according to Illuminate Data. Oh. It's a 36 year old track, as we have established. It sits in the top 50 on Apple Music and number eight on Spotify. Wow. It's just total listen. Right Meanwhile, now. that Kate Bush ballad, yeah. still holding strong on both music streamers' top 10 list. Yeah. Yeah. Season four of Stranger Things is only the second series in Netflix history to ever surpass the 1 billion hour streaming oh. mark. So rock on, Hawkins. Yeah. I love that Kate Bush song. Yeah. I love that young kids are getting exposed to this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know how to 
sit on this couch, do you? Quickly, Billy Joel. <laughs> Speaking of 80s rock legends, uh, over the weekend, Joel gave some fans in Detroit a nice surprise. The piano man brought out Death Leopards. We are going back. Death Leopard? Death Leopard. Oh, I used yes. to love Joe Death Elliot. Leopard. Death Leopard. Or some sugar on They me. go way back. Yes, that's what they did. Oh, this song? Oh, oh, come on. On Saturday, yes. Billy Joel sat at the keys and they did pour some sugar on me. No oh, way. Yes. Oh, that's a good song. The chorus. Oh, no, we're gonna lose no, it. no, that's it. Come on. Here comes Pour some sugar on me. See, I knew you had a, a, a banger inside you somewhere. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe late eighties. Yeah, late eighties. Either so way, good. Uh, Camaro was involved. Oh yeah, always uh, cranking it. That's it, Carson. That was that's outstanding. Yeah. It was like that was TRL. Good, that's yeah, outstanding. All right, good night. Like, <laughs> hey, don't don't get your feet on that couch. Nobody knows. And now to the reason we call the show Pop Star Plus. Just a few more headlines for you, and we'll start with Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard. The Jurassic stars are sharing all the feels as the press tour for their latest film comes to an end. Chris and Bryce have co-starred in all three of the new Jurassic World movies since the franchise was brought back in 2015. Just yesterday, Pratt posted a series of photos alongside his on-screen buddy, Bryce, writing very kindly in the caption, you've been by my side through this crazy ride for over eight years, and I wouldn't have it any other way, eight extraordinary years, three fantastic films. It's been such an honor sharing this journey with you. And you can check out that dynamic duo, of course, in Jurassic World Dominion. That is playing in theaters now from our sister company, Universal Pictures. And finally, Paradise Highway. Morgan Freeman is headed back to the big screen in this dark thriller. In it, Morgan plays an FBI agent investigating human trafficking, where he crosses paths with one truck driver being blackmailed into the business. Here's a look. What is the package? You don't understand it. I don't take people. No way I can promise what'll happen to your brother if you don't take the girl where she needs to go. You're driving. You're not suggesting we go analog to every truck stop. You wanted field work. This is the field. It was a girl, Dennis. What do you mean? The package was a girl. What? What happened? We're in this together. See, I would watch that now, just because of that little thing I just showed you. Never heard of it. Now I'm going to watch it. Morgan Freeman in Paradise Highway. That hits theaters July 29th. All right, that's the latest you're going to need to know for today. Still coming up, Friday Night Lights star Taylor Kitsch breaks down his latest action-packed series. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back. The Terminalist explores the twists and turns that unfold when a Navy SEAL, played by Chris Pratt, returns home from battle. Taylor Kitsch plays Ben Edwards, a friend to Pratt's character, James Reese, and helps figure out how a mission might have been set up to fail. He spoke to us about the high stakes drama that ensues.
Investigations are still ongoing into the failures of Operation Odin Sword. Failed missions resulted in the death of 12 Navy SEALs. The Terminal List is from a book written by Jack Carr, who is a Navy SEAL, and it's a psychological thriller, character driven with incredible action that can be very leading and or misleading. Wanna well, tell me what happened? Somebody fed us bad intel. This is set up. Ben Edwards is a guy born and raised on the beach in Venice, California. He plays the best friend of Chris Pratt's character, James Reese. And they both went through BUDS training together, Navy SEAL training, and both fought overseas together. And he is a guy who basically facilitates the revenge and redemption that, that, that James Reese is searching for. And that brotherhood that these two guys share kind of is what drives this whole show. Whoever set us up, bro. They might be able to fake evidence. They can't fake Boozer. Could have assets killing seals in Coronado. That's what you're telling me. Someone does. These are guys that are brothers in arms, you know, that go through something that is quite literally unrelatable on so many levels. So, you know, Pratt and I set out to have that throughout the whole show and to work on that through the whole show and to show different colors. And maybe when you think it would go dark that these guys check in with each other through levity, which Ben does a ton, um, which was fun to play. Answers or blood? Blood. Seals or anybody in the military, it's not, it's not paint by numbers. These men and women are very different. They, they come it, all shapes, all sizes, all different personalities, all different backgrounds. So to kind of do a deep dive into Ben was a lot of fun. You know, there is that laid back quality, but there's also a guy that would be relentlessly violent. And I love playing that dichotomy. And, and it's a guy you can walk by on Venice beach and be like, yeah, it's just another surfer. But at the same time, you just definitely don't want to cross them. And that's fun to play. It all started from the first Zoom. If you don't have that chemistry, it's just the show literally is not going to work because it really does rely on this relationship all the way to the last beat. Obviously, Pratt does a lot of the heavy liftings. He's an egoless guy, you know, he's, he's I mean, Look, he's on fire right now. He's one of the biggest movie stars on the planet and you can't really argue that. So to come into this and to serve that story with him has, has been a blast. You know, he's very easy to get along with, no ego. And he was just all for taking risks and throwing improv and, and kind of just playing around and throwing curveballs to each other. On FNL, sometimes on the bigger films or something that has a bigger microscope, they they don't promote risk. They play a lot safer. And I'll take that with me for my whole career to take the risks and to find that truth and authenticity. So um, that taught me a lot, you know, and to be loose, man. That's when you're at your best. So that was a springboard to the to the career. This is personal. I mean, this is a fictional story, psychological thriller. I guarantee you, you won't see it coming. The twists and turns in the leading to misleading. I think you're going to be entertained, man. I think it's a you're going to be enveloped by the action in this story. It's got a very strong heartbeat, most importantly. And I think it's going to be hard not to binge it. And a big thanks to Taylor for spending some time with us. That looks good. The Terminal List is available on Prime Video now. Coming up next, Steve Carell's visit here on Today about the latest in the Minions world. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. 
Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, top story with Tom Hamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Hallie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Uvalde, Texas, a small town that has become yet another landmark. How long do you think it took for all this damage to occur? Tell us what, what it was like. With our NBC News exclusive. And welcome back to Popstar Plus. Who doesn't love the Minions? If you haven't heard, the latest installment of the Despicable Me franchise snagged an Independence Day four-day opening record, brought in more than $125 million at the box office. So here's our recent chat with the man who plays Gru himself, the great Steve Carell. Check it out, our plaza has been taken over. We've been minionized and we love it. But what are they without the big boss himself, Gru? And we are joined now by Steve Carell, who returns as the supervillain in Minions, The Rise of Gru. But this time, Gru is 11 and 3 quarters years old and just meeting our yellow friends for the very first time. Take a look. When you guys tracked me down and responded to my help wanted ad, I was like, who are these tiny tater tots? And where did they get so much denim? Steve Carell, good morning. Good morning. We meet again. I know. Can you believe that this has had such staying power? It started with Despicable One, then two, then the Minions movie. This is, I think, the, is this the fifth in the franchise? Yes. Would you have ever thought this would be the one? Not until I saw the first one. Yeah. Honestly, because it takes like a year and a half, two years to do the voice and, you know, all the animation. They animate to the voice. And, and I thought, it's a good script, it's really fun, I love the people involved, but then when you see the final product and what the animators and directors, producers yeah. do to it, uh, incredible. When they first were like, we're gonna have these little yellow guys that wear denim overalls, they have like, some of them have one eye, they speak a language no one can understand, but everybody kind of understands. Were you like, oh, that's gonna be a hit? Exactly, yeah, I was like, well, good luck. Good luck with those, <laughs> those minions, that's, that's an ace idea. And uh, yeah, they were geniuses. It, is it the minions that is the secret to the success, or Let's be honest, is it Gru? It's Gru. Yes. It's mostly Gru, I think. No. The minions, the minions, and they've been described as Twinkies or Tater Tots, yes. little pills, you know. They, they're, it's sort of incomprehensible to me that it became what it became. But people love them, and they're, I think it's because they're equal parts um, obnoxious and uh, endearing. They are, and mischievous. Yeah. I mean, I, I love them. I, that's the funny thing about it. It's like grown-ups like these movies, too. You were telling me even your kids, who are now young adults, wanted to come to the premiere. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they were so excited. And my son, after the premiere, pulled me aside and said, Dad, seriously, you know, all kidding aside about this, you know, in a kid's movie, he's like, it was really good. <laughs> like, and I, I love it, because he's an aspiring film student. He's like, I love the shots. I love the composition. You know, the, all the editing, the timing. Like, he really was into the movie as a movie. It was fun to see. The first one came out when he was like four or five. Oh. And now he's 18. And so he has an appreciation in a different way. That, that's high praise, especially from a, a teenager. Yeah. Like, just to say anything nice about anything a parent is involved in. Yeah. Like, good good on you. So let's talk. This is Gru's origin.
origin story. Yeah. I love that it takes place in the 70s because that's just a magical template for them to work on. The for outfits, sure. the cost, the music, all of it. Yeah. Oh yeah, the music. I mean, it, it's all it's it's all a big part of what the, the nostalgia of it. I think is what's going to appeal to the adults. There's there is one joke in it about the length of time it takes to dial a rotary phone. <laughs> yes. That's maybe one of my favorite parts of the movie. It, it's incredible. Um, Gru is 11 and three quarters years old, which made me think about you in the 70s at 11 and three quarters years old. Yeah. What kind of kid were you? Well, I was really cool. Oh, really? Yeah. Like not no nerdy. No, anything. no, 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 no. I had it all dialed in. You were, were you a bully kind of too? No. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I had, like, I wore, I had long hair. Yeah. And I had, we called them flares. Oh, like bell bottoms? They were kinda, bell bottoms, yeah. yeah. I had, like, purple striped ones. <laughs> Um, so I was kind of rocking the look. Were Remember you, fry were, boots? Yeah, I, I do. Wear fry boots. Oh yeah, and were you like a ladies' man? Did the they, other oh yeah fifth graders just like you? Clearly, <laughs> and still am. Yeah, I know. Oh, I know. Mm -hmm. um, other than you've been married for like 50 years. <laughs> Yeah. How many years That's have exactly you been right. married? We've been married 50 years. <laughs> I know, which is odd because you're uh, 60. 27. I know, oh, 27 years. I know, your beautiful <laughs> wife, your kids. I was thinking about, though, like you really got big. You were in your late 30s, almost 40. And I was just thinking about, that's a long time to be trying to make it big, to yeah. be a journeyman in this business. Well, I wasn't really trying to make it big. I just want, a journeyman was great for me. Yeah. I was I was happy making a living. That was that was the aspiration, just to make a living at acting. And the, the rest of it was just sort of, uh, sort of gravy, really. What's the best job you ever had? We just had Kevin Ford on. He didn't miss a shift in 27 years, which is so sweet. What's the, of all your jobs that you've had? The, well, the worst one pops to mind. Oh, I worked in the produce department of a supermarket, oh. and I had to wrap fruit in cellophane. Oh. I don't know why they did it at that point to keep it fresh. I guess <laughs> it was um, the seventies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You were eleven and three quarters. Yeah, it was. It was that was a tricky time. Yeah, and the boxes get all soggy there it's in the disgusting. produce department. I know. And I was terrible at it. At one point, I was stocking popcorn on the shelves, and I accidentally poked a hole in the bag. So I took a a one of the labelers to put the price tags on and I sealed up the oh. hole with like 18 prices and then my manager said what's this and he peeled it off and popcorn over the floor clean up aisle five yep <laughs> that's exactly right thank you so much it's good to see you the movie is a delight and Thanks. it's because of you grew it's your origin story it's all about grew you're just saying that. no I'm not I love you grew and I love the minions it's from our parent company NBC Universal and Illumination but we'd be saying this no matter what because it's a fabulous movie and the kids will love it thank Thank you. Thanks. And of course, we should mention that Minions, The Rise of Gru is from our parent company, NBC Universal and Illumination Entertainment. All right, coming up, Harrison Ford talks adjusting to fame during his first Star Wars days. It's a can't miss summer on today. Ah! They are walking strong, elegant, and pretty easy to prepare. How to cut costs on your vacation. Vicky has the answers. Every single thing you need for the best summer yet. Only on today. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. Ali Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back, guys. The totally terrific Harrison Ford, the legend. He turns 80 years young this week, and we thought we got to honor him. So we went into our vault and found this clip. This is of Harrison Ford back in 1977 on our show talking about Star Wars as the film was being released alongside his co-stars, Mark Hamill, and of course, the late, great Carrie Fisher.
with me are three stars of Star Wars. Carrie Fisher, who plays the princess, Mark Hamill, who plays the innocent and brave young hero, and Harrison Ford, the only movie actor named after two presidents, who is the dashing, daring space pilot who helps them all escape from danger. Good morning, all. Good, Good morning. morning. <laughs> is that nice to be named after two presidents? It's, it's never come up before. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're two of the most famous presidents in American history. I'm gratified. <laughs> Carrie, did you like playing? Is this your this is your first princess. lead? Your first princess. Yeah. Your first lead part. Yes, it is. Did you like doing it? A lot. We had a lot of fun doing it. Isn't it different from anything you're likely ever to do again? Because isn't most of the background put in afterwards, or all these process shots and animation? What did you play against very often? You three were you in blank studios where they put the background in later? Blue yeah, blue screen mostly. But, but the, th the thing that... I uh, mean a big blank blue screen? Yeah, it looked like a big movie screen that was tinted blue. Uh, the thing is, it's, it, it wasn't any more difficult to imagine gigantic spaceships coming through than it is to drive in a mock-up car where you're being pulled by a truck and there's a... where you're supposed to see road and there's a, a camera crew and somebody doing the crossword and variety, bored, you know, so... It was, it's all just using your imagination. I have not seen, with the exception of Rocky, in the last few years, the kind of audience participation and audience reaction for and to a film that yeah. we have for Star Wars. It's great to sit in a theater and see people really enjoy something like that. Have you done it? Have you been? Yeah. Any of you? Have oh, you gone yes. to see a theater just oh, yeah. anonymously, just go in as a patron? It's sure. easy What's... to be anonymous at this point, <laughs> really. Nobody recognizes us when we go into a theater, which is a pleasure, I must say. Nobody recognizes you? Just one guy who'd seen it uh, 12 times, <laughs> and he, he asked me What was his reaction? Out. He asked uh, you he, out? Yeah. The princess. No, I first told him that I was the prize, that the 20th Century Fox officer had heard he'd seen it 12 times, and he got a free date with the princess and a bucket of popcorn. Tickets punched, did you But he away? believed me. <laughs> How'd you get this role? Um, mafia. It's a lot about <laughs> mafia, this film. No, no, no. How did you really get this role? Uh, <laughs> Well, George was seeing everybody that could walk into the office, so I could do that. And uh, I tested for it, and they mailed the test over to George, who was scouting locations in London, and I got it. She's hired by mail, you see. <laughs> how, how do you do audition for a film in which most of your acting is in front of a blue screen? Unbelievable the way this came about. I wish I could say I walked in and he said, there's Luke Skywalker. Mm -hmm. I walked in, George was having joint interviews with Brian De Palma, who was casting Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> Every five minutes, there, were, there, was, there was another person waiting just to talk. And we didn't, I never saw a script. I got five pages after that initial meeting in the mail. They said, memorize it, show up, you're going to test with this guy. And uh, believe me, I said, it was, it was never that George Lucas ever said, well, this is what we're going to do. This is kind of a, he said, let's just do it. And you knew George Lucas because you were in one of his other big hits, American Graffiti, and very yeah. good in that, I yeah. must say. You've been in two enormous popular successes. American Graffiti is one of the top 25 money makers, and yeah. this is going to be sky high, you should pardon the expression. You three are young actors and actress, and you work with one of the superb actors of our time, Alec Guinness. What was it like to work with that kind of a master, like Olivia? I was shaking when I first met him, and he came to the lobby of the hotel I was staying at so that we could have lunch and get to know each other. And, uh, He's very shy, took a while to get to know him, but as he loosens up, he's everything you would want. He is generous. He wants you to look good. He's humble to, almost to the point of being annoying. You can't talk about Bridge on the River Kwai. No, 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 let's talk about your career. So you figure, what should I tell him about a soap opera I was on or what? Was he like that with you, Harrison Ford? Yeah, he spent the first half hour of our, of our acquaintanceship trying to get me a flat, on the telephone trying to get me a flat. He's enormously generous. Wow, what a gem we found right there in that, that time capsule. Glad we could play that video for you. On this, when we celebrate Mr. Harrison Ford's 80th birthday. So there you go, happy birthday. And that's going to do it for today's Popstar Plus. As always, thanks for tuning in. Tomorrow we're going to have another great episode for you. So come on back and see us. So long.
Six months ago today, the residents of Mayfield, Kentucky, were waking up to a disaster, that devastating tornado that ripped through their community, right through the downtown, leveling it, destroying businesses and homes, and upending so many people's lives. Yeah, hard to believe it's been six months, but the residents of Mayfield are so resilient, and they're vowing to get their town back to what it once was. NBC senior national correspondent Kate Snow traveled back to Mayfield to see how they're rebuilding. Six months after a tornado swept through downtown Mayfield, Kentucky, signs of progress and change. Volunteers with Homes and Hope are building Jeremiah Barker and his family a free new home. And this is the living room and the kitchen is going to be over here. The group plans to build a hundred here within a year, each one now built to withstand wind, stronger foundations, sturdy lumber, and special clips to keep roofs from flying off. The trauma of that night in December is still fresh. We started hearing beams pop. You heard because it was one pop, two pop, three pop, four pop, and then we all got lifted. Once I seen a beam pass my face like this and I, I leaned over and it was slow motion and I leaned over and it went past. That's when I, you know, I screamed, you know, God, please know. That night, Kiana Parsons was live streaming, trapped for two hours inside the candle factory where she worked. She spoke with Peter and Kristen then. It was the absolutely the most terrifying thing I've ever experienced in my life. It's been six months. How are you doing? I'm doing well, believe it or not. We met her back at the factory site, now a cleared slab. The factory has reopened in another building. You feel lucky standing here. I'm blessed. I am blessed that I'm able to stand here on my own. I'm breathing on my own. Nine people died around her. It's changed her whole perspective. That experience just really let me know how short life is. So I don't want to live a life with any regrets. It looks different to me. Everything's cleared where there used to be just piles and piles. It was like you're driving through canyons of rubble. You got to get it all cleared off before you can start the rebuild. Mayfield Mayor Kathy Stewart Onan is telling people to be patient. It'll take time, she says, to create a new downtown. You want the businesses to come sure. back. So you're ready to go. Yeah. But she's not sure how many business owners are willing to rebuild. One of the few that has, Cars Barn Barbecue, family owned for 75 years. My mother, my grandmother, you know, they sat at that last stool for years. With no insurance, owner Susie Flint had to take out a second mortgage to build this new, stronger building. She's been checking in on their regulars and hopes to reopen soon. Why was it important to reopen this place? I feel like the community needs us as much as we need them. You know, these people are my family. All my family that worked here is, is now gone. I, I have no family left. It's okay. So your customers become my family. A town where many have lived their whole lives working together to pick up the pieces. For today, Kate Snow, NBC News, Mayfield, Kentucky. And despite so many awful losses in that community, there's something so life affirming about seeing it rebuild and the resilience of so many who live there. Yeah, and the courage that it takes to rebuild yeah. and to really give back to your family of customers and community. Just incredible. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? It's a can't miss summer on today. Ah! They are walking strong, elegant, and pretty easy to prepare. How to cut costs on your vacation. Vicky has the answers. Every single thing you need for the best summer yet. Only on today. It's a can't miss summer on today. Ah! They are walking strong, elegant, and pretty easy to prepare. How to cut costs on your vacation. Vicky has the answers. Every single thing you need for the best summer yet. Only on today. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, not story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. 
These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today, it's about a story about two elementary school librarians who we love, and by the way, whose love of books connected them in an unexpected way. Take a look. The playground at Sumas Elementary School looks more like a water park. It's so badly damaged, it will never reopen. After severe flooding destroyed Sumas Elementary School in Washington State last November, the whole community was devastated. There are so many memories that happen in a school really important moments in our lives that you realize aren't going to happen anymore <laughs> in that space. And the school library was especially hard hit. When you spend that many years in, in a room and all of a sudden it's taken away from you, it's, it's like they ripped your heart out. For Kathy Brockema, the Sumas Elementary Librarian, the loss of her beloved books was heart-wrenching. They made this huge pile right in the middle of the floor and that pile got bigger and bigger and bigger. Throughout the Sumas community, hundreds of homes and dozens of businesses were damaged, yet neighbors showed up to help the school. The day that we all came back to the buildings was um, a day I'll never forget. Yet, the goodness that came out of that so over 100 people in our community helped us move. And just 10 miles to the west, Jen Frombley, a fellow elementary school librarian, took notice. I saw some pictures of a classroom where the water was almost up to the sink. And so pretty much the entire school was destroyed. I was driving to work one day, listening to worship music, praying, and all of a sudden it was just donate money to the Sumas Library. I believe that was not a Jen thought, that was a God thought. A thought made possible thanks to the Scholastic Book Fair she had just held at Bernice Voss Beck Elementary School in Linden. The kids were so excited because it had been so long since we've had that kind of event for them to, to enjoy. Jen received 5,000 Scholastic dollars to spend on books and supplies as proceeds from the fair, which she decided to split with Sumas Elementary. So she wrote a note to Kathy, a woman she had never met before. Kathy, I can't even imagine what you're going through with the loss of your library. We just had a book fair and would like to donate 2,500 Scholastic dollars to your library. It totally took my breath away. I, I think the hair stood up on my arms, you know, one of those chills, like, oh my gosh. This is the right thing to do. There was no question for me. That money went a long way. I mean, I was able to buy hundreds books. So when they give me the okay, those books are the first ones to go on the shelves. A simple act of kindness that forever bonded these two librarians. I have put a gift plate in every single donated book. If I know the person that gave it to our library, their name is in that book as a thank you. We came from this dark place where we had this flooding, but look at what we were able to do as a community generosity that everybody has shown. There's no way to thank everybody enough for what they've done. I mean, librarian saved the world. And now with us <laughs> is Kathy Brockema, Sumas Elementary Librarian. Kathy, I know well, looking at those images of your beloved library mm -hmm. broke your heart, but what did it feel like to have mm -hmm. all of these people come together mm -hmm. right afterwards to help you, including a complete stranger. Yeah. There were a lot of strangers that were there helping clean up. And the part that made me feel so grateful was they were giving up their time yeah. when their own homes were underwater waiting for their cleanup. That's incredible. They took care of the school before they took care of their own homes. I love the woman we featured in the piece. Her name was Jen, and said Jen, she said Jen she Bromley. got... Did you ever get a chance to say I've hey to her? I've never met her, and she's probably only 15 miles away. Well, she's actually closer than 15 miles away right now. Hey, Jen, you want to come <laughs> say hello? <laughs> come on over. Yes. <laughs> It's so nice to meet you. You made such a difference in our lives. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank oh you. My gosh. My pleasure. What a moment that was, Jen, when you said you were listening to worship, worship music driving along and then it just came to you. 
Yeah, I, I really think of that as a God thought, not a Jen thought. Yeah. Like, I loved that beautiful yeah. sentence in that because it, it, but you know what? <laughs> you can have a thought yeah. that feels like a God thought yeah. and then there's action. Yeah. Yeah. What did your kids think when they knew they were helping <laughs> this incredible librarian and all these kids get the books they, they deserve? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, I didn't think anything of it. I didn't, I, I felt like it was the right thing to do. And so I didn't, tell the kids to start with oh. until Scholastic contacted me and they asked, what was the reaction of the kiddos? Uh -huh. And so then I, I told each class separately and most of them broke out in applause. Oh, uh, oh, one, oh one student literally leaned forward in her seat and said, I, are we going to help them? <laughs> oh. Are we going to help them? Oh. Well, we have a couple of books for you. We sure do. Kathy, Kathy will you, this is for you. And will you just read it? Chicken Little and the Big Bad Wolf. Yeah. Yeah. Will you read the dedication on the first page? Mm -hmm. This book is dedicated to Kathy Bronkema, Sumas Elementary Librarian. As your school reopens in its brand new building, Scholastic would like to help fill your library shelf. I'll be donating $10,000 worth of books in addition to 10,000 scholastic dollars for your school community to use towards supplies and even more books. Um, oh my goodness. What do you think? What do you think? think? Oh my gosh. Thank you, Scholastic. <laughs> Jen? Oh. Yeah. We have a dedication for you too. Would you I like love to this book, The Cat Kid uh, Comic Club. I know, I'm like, oh, it's the new one. Yes, it is. <laughs> the kids will be so excited about that. This book is dedicated to Jen Frombley, Bernice Fosbeck Elementary Librarian. In honor of the kindness you bestowed on your neighbors, Scholastic will also be donating $10,000 worth of books and $10,000 Scholastic dollars to your school community as well. Wow. Oh my God. Wow. Oh my God. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Full circle. Oh my, oh my gosh, Kathy. books can change the world <laughs> they, they and librarians. Do. Yes, do. indeed. Uh, Jenna's mom's a librarian, as you know, yes. and my mom's a librarian. Right. Worked at the Library of Congress for 30 uh, plus years. I mean, we love librarians. Library. 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 Yeah. <laughs> well, we love you all. Thank you guys thank for you coming so to be with you. us. Congratulations, thank too. Thank you for all you do, and we <laughs> have to thank the folks at Scholastic who brought us the story about the power of kindness. Indeed. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, top story with Tom Hamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to you today. We've got a lot to celebrate on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Hallie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to you today. We've got a lot to celebrate on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it! Yeah. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, can we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. More people are heading back to school. The nation now seeing a class reunion rebound after the pandemic forced many to press pause on high school and college homecomings. Some reunion planners are even seeing business boom by as much as 25 percent over their pre-pandemic dealings. And they say this year, 25 to 50 percent of reunions are either rescheduled or combined events with other classes who also had to postpone their gatherings as a delayed wave of alumni arrive back at their old stomping grounds. I don't care if you like us because we don't like you. But for many, the focus isn't the high school drama. 
the past memories are, are locked in a box and when we access them, uh, they bring us joy. We're coming to you straight in front of the PHS campus. For the past two years, Mike Wolf and Stephanie Warner have been working to plan their 20 year reunion for Poway High School's class of 2000. Obviously, the pandemic uh, put a kibosh on certain things. And so after like three or four reschedules, revisions and, and redos, we're, we're on. They'll now host a unique 22 year reunion in San Diego and admit there are some jitters. We're all going to be a little nervous. I'm going to think about what I'm wearing a few couple different times. Experts say that anxiousness you might feel before reuniting with old friends is not uncommon. Concerns about not measuring up to expectations or being put in uncomfortable situations often make us feel like we're in the spotlight and being judged by those around us. But that is rarely the reality. People are rarely judging us as much as we think they are and that they're a lot more focused on themselves and how they think they're coming off socially. To knock out those nerves, experts say invite a friend. A familiar face can make you feel more secure and comfortable in larger groups. Making others feel like they belong by engaging in conversation will make them feel welcome and can also take the focus off of you. And cut yourself some slack. Keep in mind our brains tend to amplify embarrassing encounters, making them seem worse and preventing us from embracing all the excitement. I think seeing people in person will actually just remind all of us we're all humans, we're all going through these experiences, and it's so great to be together. All right. And guys, there really is this domino effect that happens with reunions. When you tell your friends you're actually going, it kind of breaks the ice and everyone, you know, doesn't want to say I'm the first one to be there. But once you get the ball rolling, everyone turns out. Yeah. So All right. cool. you've got yours coming yeah. up. Don't well, you? It's my 50th high school reunion. I went to the 40th. The smart thing our organizers did, they put our pictures, our yearbook pictures on the name tags because oh, yeah. none of us yeah. looked yeah. anything. No, exactly. I didn't know exactly. who these people yeah. were. They didn't know who I was. You know, it's funny. Speaking of reunions, we're here out on the plaza and I heard there are actually some reunions in the crowd that oh, are happening. Oh, cool. Can I get uh, the folks who are out here from Arizona to raise your hands? Uh, Any University of Arizona fans? Oh, hey. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. Yeah. Hey. Come on over. Hi. Hey. 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 University of Arizona. Hi. Hey. Bear down. Maybe yes. Hello. I love you guys. So welcome. Are you from Tucson? Anyone from Tucson? <laughs> hi. Okay. Hi. How are you? But we didn't go to college. Oh my God. Surprise. Oh my God. Oh, this is my best friend. Melissa, except for Jenna thinks that you are her best friend, but you're really my best friend. Oh. Melissa, I can't believe it. Oh, no, I'm shocked. She I just told the them, I go, I barely that. attended high school. <laughs> I was always ditching and doing terrible things, and I won't recognize anyone, but this is my dearest. And how far you've come. Oh, like my God. I love you. Yeah, oh, wow. Awesome. Yes, Thank you, Vic. It's so fun to see people. Sweet. Yes, do a reunion. Oh, there we are. Oh, oh my God. God. Play tennis together. These are best buds. Wow, well, awesome. Thank you, Vic. The reunions, oh, they're a little sweet. contagious. So there's not just one surprise. There's someone else here who used to be a radio mentor for one Al Roker. Whoa. Wait, what? Where are we? As we go, folks, Al, come on over, Al. Tell me, do you see a familiar face in the crowd? Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> sweet blue. Uh, How are you, Vicky? WOCR and I was squeaking oh, to you. That's right, man. Yes. That's right. I've got the blue glasses. And I brought the blue glasses. God bless you. God oh bless my you, gosh. Man. Good to see you. Right. Al, you're such a mentor for so many people, but Lou was your mentor. Yes, he was. He's, uh, you can see, uh, I look older than Lou, even though he's older than me. <laughs> well, you got the glasses going. Love that look. God no, bless you. No, it's so Let's good keep to the see reunion you. spirit oh going, guys. Oh my gosh. There's more. Are there Wait, any TRL more. fans in the house? Oh, oh, TRL people. Come on over, Carson. Tell me, do you recognize anyone in this crowd? It's, oh, Tony DeSantis. Yeah, Tony, there it is. Oh, What's hey, forget about it. Hey, forget about it. It's like the old days. Did they make you come here? Yeah, man. Oh, my God. This is my man right here. Oh, I mean, we created you, TRL together. That's right. You launched that show, which yes, we did. is iconic. Yes, it is. Just like the bro. Great, man. How about you? Wow, with the stories we have. Right. Uh, what exactly. A, what a good exactly. time. This Lou, where are you joining us from? Yes, it is a lot earlier. <laughs> wow. hey, how's the family? Everybody's good? Good, man. I told everybody the Today Show that like we stole a lot of this concept when we created TRL. That's the window, the being outdoors, all the people. The crowd. Yeah, that's it. That's right. 
right? Nothing oh like god, it. I can't believe they got you up this early, bro. <laughs> Dude, please, anything. Like, oh my god, it's so good to see you. How long has it been since you've seen each other? Uh, too long. We text yeah. all the time. Yeah. We, you know, yeah, we it's got been a while. Yeah, but it's been a minute. Yeah, oh. absolutely, man. We got to hang more. Yeah, oh, I've get never get seen you so speechless, Carson. Okay. What do you mean? I can't stop talking. Let's think about the people we love. We invite them to our weddings. There is someone very special here for a Mr. Craig Melvin. Tell me, where are you? Robert, where are you, my friend? Oh, Robert. Bullshit. There you are. <laughs> Two million. Oh, I thought you were on a hunting trip. I was. This is cute, bro. I love this. What's up? How are his friends? Time. Robert Goings. Yeah, I was just right. texting with him. He was like, oh, I'm duck hunting down in wherever you are. Argentina. Yeah. Came nice. back for you, my brother. Yeah, Came all the way from Argentina. How long have you been here? Jacket. This is fantastic. Look at that. Look how much younger we were in that picture. Oh, he's, wow. he's saying it at my wedding. Yeah. Ave, oh, yeah. I was at his wedding. My God. Ave, Look at that. Oh, yeah. Those kids. Come on out of here. How did we get you out of there? I don't know. Yeah, we're going to get everybody oh, okay. out there. Okay, okay. and so last but not least, Hokies. 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 Join me, people. Where are you? Yeah, let's go. Sorority sister in the mix here. Is there a Mary? Hi. Raise your hand. Yeah. Come in, come in, come in, come in. Hello. Oh, oh. the best. Wow. Oh, yeah, this is a big deal. <laughs> tell us. Oh, hello. You gotta go. Yeah, tell us about this, your By the way, this is Mary Kevel. We were college roommates. I can't even believe you're standing here. Oh, oh she just got remarried. It was oh, a beautiful God. moment. In the driveway. In the dri <laughs> come out. Okay. Come out. Come out. Oh my God, I'm so shocked. Oh, this is a shame. We thought this was just This is crazy. <laughs> I'm shocked. Come on over. Oh, this is crazy. I was United Money. This is insane. We're never actually surprised that much on the show. This is shocking. Well, they got the real people. That's I know. That's what's amazing. That's what's amazing. That's what's amazing. I can see the love. Tony and I can't even talk I'm about like, anything we did at MTV. I'm like, what are we doing tonight? Oh, right? my God. Hey, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the uh, sweet blue Why is Vicky doing a reunion story <laughs> out on the plaza? Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Vicky, Vicky, you're pretty incredible. Were you all pretty well surprised? How fun yeah. to be able to see. Yes. Flat well, all of our done. pals. Thank wow. you, today's show. Love Thank you. What a great day. What a great day. All right. Vicky, thank you. Uvalde, Texas, a small town that has become yet another landmark. How long do you think it took for all this damage to occur? Can you tell us what, what it was like? With our NBC News exclusive. Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. It's a can't-miss summer on today. They are walking strong, elegant, and pretty easy to prepare. How to cut costs on your vacation. Vicki has the answers. Every single thing you need for the best summer yet. Only on Today. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. Jenny Bolin is an actress, a podcaster, just a New York Times bestselling author of two memoirs, and she can now add novelist to her impressive list of accolades. Yeah, her new book, which is everywhere, by the way, it's so good. It's called City of Lights, We Can't Breathe. It's about a mom who gets swept up in the over-the-top world of social media. 
Jenny, this is so much fun. It's this crazy. book is everywhere. I feel like, oh. for so, you know, when a book comes out, sometimes everywhere yes. you turn, you see it. This is that book. I am so yeah. happy to hear that. Yeah. It's everywhere. And what's oh, cool about you. it is that I feel like, I mean, it takes place in New York. Yes. Down by where we live. Yes. But I feel like any mom can relate to this. Yes. Because it's sort of the world of putting your best foot forward mm -hmm. on social media right. and maybe not your best foot yeah. in your real life. Yeah. Yes. How do you come up with the concept? Well, I would, you know, I found myself, I was living in New York and I had a new baby and mm. I was being courted by different brands to promote different things and found myself sort of becoming, I don't know, an influencer of sorts. <laughs> yeah. um, and I couldn't help but notice the women around me that there was a disparity between motherhood as it was presented online yes. and motherhood as we were actually yeah. living it. <laughs> and at night I would go home and I would just, this question would rattle around in my head and that was, if you're so busy curating parenthood for other people, how present are you in your real Explain. life for your real kids? Pause, Pause. Yeah. Pause. that right there. That's Brilliant. the money, that's it. So it, what did you do with that thought? Well, I was haunted by yeah. it. And I knew that I could not write this book as another memoir. Yeah. Because if I wrote this as, as a memoir, I'd have to move out of town, Hoda. I couldn't stay in New York. I would have been driven out. So it's... <clears throat> Fiction, <laughs> yeah. and um, and yeah, but I mean, it is my my deepest truth, some of my darkest truths, and it's a it's a journey into uh, some of the missteps I've had along the way mm -hmm. and the lessons I've I've learned. What uh, makes what yeah. makes it the perfect read, and yeah. you can put this on the back of the paperback, is that it's funny, but it also has this important message, which I'm sure you didn't mean for it to have, yeah. but that like put down your phones. Yeah, and oh, yeah. No, that was the that was what I wanted. Yeah. Be here. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what it is. And how yes. do you all do that in your own lives? Well, I mean, it's so hard. It's it's like a tightrope. And I feel like before the pandemic, it was really good. It was like you know the cigarette that I would hide from my children. <laughs> uh, and then the pandemic hit, and Jason and I. I were like, how do we strap these iPads to their heads <laughs> so they can just like stay away from us all day long? Uh, yeah, so then, you know. Well, how did we get in the book? No, no, I read you guys, guys wait, so wait, how did we get in the book? We are at sort of the, cli at the, the climatic You're the precipice. moment. We are the moment. We are. We're stars. Why did you pick us? I, well, first of all, I love you guys. Okay. Oh, and I was you. picturing, you know, I'd been here and I had yeah. done those mom versations yes. with you guys. And I and I thought, how amazing if this moment happens when I'm in one of these mom ver or my characters in one of these mom versations <laughs> and it's Jenna and Hoda. And I just couldn't think of better people to be, you know, divulging all of my truths to. Well, this is going to be a TV series. Yes. yes you're okay. Can we be you're in hired? It? We're in please, it. Right we here now. Ourselves? Can you black guys please commit to doing the series? We commit. We, we commit. commit. <laughs> we would like to do that. We would love to be in it. Okay, by the way, you also yeah. make these wild lunches for your children. I do. Yeah, what? Give how us, how, how do feel, you do this? We don't feel we good make about like, okay. ourselves. No, it started out, it's truly just a sublimation of my own guilt, being a working mom. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I, you know, our generation, we have this oh, no, issue yeah. where no, no. we are moms. We loved you, but not that we can't No, but guys, we are moms who had mothers who work, right? Yeah. So yeah. we are mothers who work, but we also have the, the pain and trauma of that latchkey kid. So this is me sort of showing up for my son even when I can't be there. It's my version of a handwritten okay. note. But okay, what well, about... She, and you know that Hoda writes notes to her daughters I every write, day. I do a little note oh, in the every day. Oh, my, that is so, oh, so my sweet. Sweet. Oh, you guys lunches. Sivia lunch. likes lunches. Oh, oh my God. This is, you <laughs> Wait, are the, you kidding? Oh, but let me tell you, the cupcake you? looked cuter, but Jason did. He ate it? He was hungry in the car right over. Wait, did Jason lick my cupcake? He started nibbling. I closed his hand in it. Jason licked it. Look at it. Mine is too. Ew. They're Jeez. from Spots, New York. I can get wait, you guys more. Her, her, send some over. Wait, it has her book on it. I know. Oh, it did nice. have my book. But what if you don't have Jason. the time? What if you don't have the time to do this one day and you give your kids a regular lunch? Are they like, Mom? What's with the PB and J? Well, no, they love a regular lunch. Oh, you know, my, my kids. I call this. It's called dictator lunches. My children are the dictators. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so when it's a good day and he likes what I've done, he gives me a thumbs up. And sometimes he'll come home and just be like. No, he's not into I it. I wasn't into it. Mm. Yeah, we have a war on blueberries in my house where he them? refuses to eat blueberries. So but you know look, what look I do? What I keep did. giving them to him. What did you put in these raspberries? <laughs> yeah, What's you, in there? You stuffed or All right, <laughs> that's the easiest part. You what get a it? Benadryl syringe. You pipe. <laughs> What's in it? yogurt Does inside. Is there Benadryl in it? Because if no so, Benadryl I'm included, I'm you taking guys. a great nap. <laughs> <laughs> That's but they're good. just little yogurt I feel like bites. Jason they're also so somehow inserted in this. Yeah. <laughs> Jason, did you insert into the raspberries? This is a, this is the tenacious. Guys. This is. 
family television. You're right. Jason says it's the Today Show. It's family television. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have a mic on, but we're translating. Okay. okay. This book is definitely going to hit the New York Times bestseller. It's oh so God, much fun. From your lips. It is the summer reading book. And the fact that it took you a long time to get it published it or a tricky time, yes. we don't we even do, understand. We, do, we don't get that at we all. We don't but understand. So all the Thank publishers you. that lost it, we saw. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you can check out. I haven't heard the word psych in a psych. long time. You can check out cityoflikestoday.com slash shop. Buongiorno today all day. Who doesn't love Italian food? Well, up next on Hashtag Cooking, Saba is putting her own spin on two classic Italian dishes. First, a crispy breaded eggplant that's baked, not deep fried, and gluten-free. Then she whips up a vegan version of a classic pasta dish. Oh, yeah, manja. So when I said cacio e pepe, really, I meant cashew e pepe. Huh? Am I the only one who laughs at my own jokes? <laughs> All hail Italian food. I love it. Some traditional Italian dishes do have a lot of dairy, so I wanted to create some of my favorites with a plant-based twist. Today I'm going to show you how to make a breaded eggplant that uses almond meal instead of breadcrumbs in a really delicious and creamy vegan cacio e pepe. This is hashtag Sama's Italian. Eggplant is a vegetable I kind of tend to forget about the second it enters my kitchen. So to use up all of my forgotten eggplant that I've been finding in my fridge, I wanted to create something that had the breading of an eggplant parm, but the snackability of something like a slice of bruschetta. So enter my breaded eggplant. The first thing that we're gonna do is slice our eggplant. Got a cute eggplant here. Just gonna trim the end off and start slicing. Here's a little tip. You don't actually need to salt your eggplant. Traditionally, you'd salt your eggplant to get rid of that bitterness, but nowadays, the bitterness has been bred out of eggplant. I'm slicing my eggplant into little slices that are about a quarter of an inch thick. Perfect. So happy I'm using up my forgotten eggplant. It's just been sitting in there for so long. Okay. I'm gonna let my eggplant hang out here while I make my little egg mixture. I wanted my breading to have a lot of flavor on its own. So in addition to my almond meal, I'm gonna add some of my favorite spices. I'm using almond meal or unblanched almond flour for this recipe, which still keeps the skin on the almonds. I find that this is really nice to add texture and it's a great replacement for breadcrumbs. The cayenne is gonna add a little heat and the turmeric and cumin are my favorite pairing. We cannot forget our salt and pepper. What is life without some salt and pepper? It'd be very unseasoned and boring. Little salt. And some freshly ground black pepper. I like that the turmeric is also gonna add some nice yellow color to this eggplant. Just gonna whisk this until it's nice and well combined. I want the breading to be really flavorful and so I'm mixing it super well so no piece of eggplant goes unseasoned. That would be really sad. Also super bold of me to wear a white shirt when I'm using turmeric. This is how I live on the edge, okay? Beautiful. The breading is happy. Now time to beat an egg. We want to whisk the egg until it's completely uniform. We don't want any separation between the yolk and the white. This looks nice and uniform. A perfect little bath for my eggplant. Now it's time to assemble. This eggplant has really been on a journey from being forgotten in the fridge to going down the line to flavor. I mean, lucky eggplant though. We want to dip it straight in this egg mixture. Make sure it's really well coated. Now we don't want any excess egg on the eggplant. So I'm just gonna let it drip out just like this. We want a really nice and even coating of the breading, which is why we're doing this. And now we're gonna put it straight into our breading. 
to the parchment paper we go. Now we're just gonna repeat. This is a way better fate for your eggplant than the trash, I'm just saying. Last one, getting a little emotional. Don't worry about those guys though, I promise I will bread them later. We are ready for the oven. Look at those colors, look so pretty. I'm popping these in at 375 degrees for 30 minutes, make sure to flip them halfway through. I think we all need to take a moment just to look at the color alone. Look at that yellow from the turmeric, the little golden crispness on the edges. I'm like drooling already, I really can't wait to eat them. These are perfect on their own, honestly, because they have so much flavor in the breading, but I love to use them as a vehicle for my toppings of choice. This could be a bruschetta, this could be a pesto, even just a little tahini drizzle with some salt is so good. Today, I'm gonna use a bruschetta and a pesto. By the way, you can make your own for sure, but if you wanna buy store-bought too, totally fine with me. Again, what a bold choice of me to cook with turmeric and wear white. Like, I love taking risks. Okay, I'm gonna add some pesto. Spread that on really nicely. These would make a great app or a side at your next party, or even if you're just partying by yourself. They'd make a great appetizer for you. That's fine. We love that. We love a party of one. These are even good dipped in some marinara sauce, just keeping it super simple. There's so much you can do with them. They taste good with basically everything. For my bruschetta. And because everything is better with a little salt, gonna add some flaky sea salt on top. It's gonna taste really good, it's gonna add a little bit more saltiness, but it's also gonna look really pretty too. Just a little. You know, this eggplant, this middle one, it's not sure what it wants, so it's gonna get both. <laughs> Whoever gets this piece, that's the lucky person at the party. <laughs> I'm cracking myself up, okay. <sighs> Okay, great. Can't forget a little salt on here. This screams, you need to take a picture of me. So I'm gonna listen. And again, feel free to use whatever toppings you want. This is truly very customizable to your liking and your flavor inclination. Or whatever you see at the store that you're like, mm, that looks good, I'm gonna put that on my breaded eggplant. I support you. Even hummus? I just thought of that. Even hummus? That's what I'm gonna top this with next time. Okay. I for sure got the shot. I got like 15, to be real with you. So now I'm gonna try one. Okay. I'm gonna go for it with this little guy right here. Okay, I'm ready. I hope you're ready. Mmm, so good. I'm serving this at my next party. Even if it's just me, I'm just gonna serve it to myself. I deserve it. This was so yummy. And look what we created. The colors of an Italian flag. I mean, come on, look at that. So cute. A question are you dairy free and miss the glory days of really creamy cheesy pastas well you're in luck because my next recipe my vegan cacio e pepe has you completely covered i'm gonna go get the ingredients
To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Well, meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now? What it all means for you for an hour every day? It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Kajue Pepe is one of those dishes that everyone is obsessed with. But if you can't tolerate dairy, it's probably not high on your list. Don't worry though, I'm going to change that because this vegan Kajue Pepe is truly going to blow your mind. First up, we're going to make our cashew parmesan. And yes, I did say cashew parmesan. To make this parm, we're using a base of cashews, raw cashews, and nutritional yeast for that savory, nutty, cheesy flavor. I'm going to start by adding my raw cashews into my blender. Make sure your cashews are raw and unsalted. Now for our nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast is commonly used as a vegan cheese substitute because it's got this savory, nutty, cheesy flavor. A little bit of umami in there too. Make sure you buy the fortified version because that's the one that has a lot of vitamins and minerals. Now we need some spices. We've got to have a little seasoning. So, got some salt. Salt going in. And some garlic powder. Now, all we're going to do because my blender is truly my best friend, is blend it all up. Be careful though not to over blend. We just want to blitz it a little bit so we get a nice fine powder, sort of like a Parmesan. And that's perfect. That took less than 10 seconds. Let me show you what it looks like. It smells so good. It's cheesy, it's nutty, it's savory. It's kind of like a nice fine powder, perfect for sprinkling on top of pasta. This makes a little bit more than I'll need for this recipe, so you can totally store this in the fridge for up to a week. Top your popcorn with it, some salads, it's very versatile. And you know what? I'm gonna make my sauce in this blender too, so I'm just gonna transfer this out, keep it over here, don't have to wash any more dishes. I'm being lazy today and that's okay. I still love myself. This is some hashtag precious Parmesan. Can't waste any of it. So the reason I'm starting with the Parmesan is because the Parm is dry. The sauce is going to be more creamy and liquidy. So that's why we're doing it in this order. Saving us some time, saving us some washing dishes. Now I'm done with my cashew Parm. Time to make the sauce. I'm using soaked cashews to create this sauce. It's gonna make it really creamy, really luscious. When you soak cashews in water, it actually becomes a little bit more pliable and easy to just blend to very delicious sauces and fillings. Just soak them for an hour in hot water. I'm just gonna add them to my blender. Come on, you can do it. Because cashews are super buttery, they're really rich, I want something a little acidic and tangy to sort of balance that out. Fresh lemon juice, always. Now I'm gonna add my garlic. I'm using raw garlic here because I want that really punchy flavor. For that really nutty, savory, cheesy flavor, I'm gonna add some nutritional yeast into my sauce. Just adding some salt. And listen, this is a cachoe e pepe, after all. So we have to add some pepper. Freshly ground pepper, always. We want that bite. We want it to be really peppery and delicious and be sharp as well. 
Whenever I make this recipe, I skip my workout. This is it right here. A lot of pepper is necessary. Gonna finish it off with some extra virgin olive oil. And then to help the blender move, I'm just gonna add a little bit of water just to get the blender going. You may need to add more water later, but just check the texture of the sauce and then add more as you see fit. It's time to blend. I'm gonna add a little bit more water. I mean, it smells so cheesy already. <gasps> I'm in love. Just a little. <gasps> it looks so good. Sorry, that was a little dramatic. I have to show you this texture. I'm gonna give it one more good blend. Every time I make this recipe, I've made it so many times, but I'm always so shocked by how creamy it is without any of the dairy. It's magic. Mmm, it's so good. I don't think it needs anything. Oh my God. Good for me. Okay, let me show you this texture. Oh, it's so peppery. It's like spicy almost, but still super savory and nutty. I love this so much. All right. Can't leave any sauce behind. I love a blender pasta sauce. It's so easy. Throw together, minimal prep, minimal ingredients. Look at how creamy and luscious that is. Sauce is done. Now I'm gonna go cook my pasta. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Hamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Uvalde, Texas, a small town that has become yet another landmark. How long do you think it took for all this damage to occur? Can you tell us what, what it was like? With our NBC News exclusive. Defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? cook our pasta. I've already got my water boiling and don't forget we must salt our pasta water. Hashtag no bland pasta. It's not good. Okay the water is ready for my pasta. Just so you know most dry store-bought pastas are vegan so if you're looking for that great but make sure you do check the label to make sure the variety you're choosing is. I'm using a vegan and gluten-free chickpea pasta. 
There's a lot of really great bean alternative pastas out these days, and I like testing all of them out. Let's talk about pasta shape. I am using a spaghetti here as an ode to the original. We've changed a lot of things already, but you know what? We're keeping it OG when it comes to the spaghetti, but you can use your favorite shape. I'm a helicopter pasta parent. <laughs> You really do have to keep watching your pasta, especially if you're using an alternative pasta, like a bean pasta, because if you overcook those for too long, it'll become a little gummy. Pasta is such a comfort food. In my household growing up, my parents would just alternate between making Indian food and pasta. That was like, <laughs> that was all we had. It was Indian food or pasta. All right, I'm feeling good about this one. We're done. We're done. Woo! Here's what I want to do. I want to save some of that starchy water for later to add to the sauce and pasta to help thicken it and bind it. So I'm going to save some of that. Just a little for later. Love being prepared. And now I'm just going to use my tongs and transfer my pasta to my dish. And then I'm just going to mix the sauce all up. I'm really excited about it. This also keeps the starchy water on the pasta. It doesn't have far to go. Spaghetti is so cute. I love it. All pasta is cute. I don't discriminate. I love all pasta. You know what time it is. It's sauce time. Remember this? Remember our old friend, our cacio e pepe sauce from earlier? It's about to meet the pasta of its dreams. Now I'm just gonna add a touch of that pasta water just to help everything mix and combine, get really nice and creamy. Helps the sauce adhere to the pasta. Toss it together. Get the sauce around every single little bit of that spaghetti. It'd be sad if we didn't. And now, time for our cashew parmesan. Ready? I'm gonna mix some in and then I'm gonna add some on top as well, just for a little bit of flavor, a little bit of aesthetics. Just like a traditional cacio e pepe, we wanna eat this immediately. We want it to stay hot, stay fresh. So I'm gonna serve this to myself right now. Is this generous? I don't care. Am I just like, are my eyes too big for my stomach? No, 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 you'll want to eat this much, I promise. Okay. I'm gonna cut myself off there. And now, let me just make this look a little pretty with my fork. Twirl this around. And add a little bit of my cashew parm. And by a little bit of my cashew parm, I meant a lot bit of my cashew parm. And, the dish wouldn't be complete without it. Some freshly ground black pepper. <laughs> okay, I have a vision. I have a vision for a really cute fork twirl photo. I'm gonna work on that. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do a video. I'm gonna do a video today. That's what's, that's what's happening. Okay, ready? Okay, we got the shot. We got it. We got it. And you know what I also got? The perfect little spiral for me to eat. I'm going for it. Mmm. It is so creamy. Like, I want you to know, this is so creamy. It's cheesy. You've got layers of flavor, right? You've got the buttery cashew is creating this really creamy sauce. The black pepper makes it peppery, woody. It's got the sharp bite. And then that salty cashew parm, which I'm just gonna add more of for fun, really ties everything together. You really won't believe there's no dairy in this, I promise. Mmm. Oh, and that garlic, 
though, that fresh garlic, it's so punchy. It makes it smell really good, makes it taste really good. Someone needs to hold me back because I'll keep talking about this for the whole day. <laughs> this is so delicious. I love creating these really fun plant-based twists on traditional Italian food. It's unique, it's fun, it's inventive, and it's super delicious. there but I'm so glad you're here because I have something I want to tell you hashtag cooking is back with all new episodes and I'm so excited to share my favorite recipes with you the day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now a daily look at the politics behind the headlines meet the press now streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News now these days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now. Streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. It's a can't miss summer on today. Ah! They are walking strong, elegant, and pretty easy to prepare. How to cut costs on your vacation? Vicky has the answers. Every single thing you need for the best summer yet. Only on today. This avocado cream pasta is literally one of my most popular recipes on my blog, and I honestly think it's because you just need a blender to make this super luxurious sauce. So, the base of it is our avocados. I'm using an avocado and a half for this recipe. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with that. All right. We're gonna scoop some of this avocado out. Look at how ripe and pretty that is. Go straight in there. This avocado is what's gonna add that super creamy element to this pasta. Now I'm gonna move on to my lemon, adding the juice of one full lemon in here. Make sure I catch all the seeds. This lemon is gonna really make it tart and acidic and bring out that zing, make it very bright and fresh. I'm gonna add some fresh basil and raw garlic. Yes, I'm using raw. It's gonna be really punchy and really bright. And I love garlic. There we go. A little bit of olive oil, just a bit. And now I'm gonna season it to taste with some salt, pepper, and red pepper flakes. Salt in there. Add as much chili flakes as you'd like. I love spice, so I'm going in with a lot. But you make your own choices, okay? Now, just to help everything get moving in the blender, we're gonna add a little bit of cold water. Make sure it's cold because we don't wanna brown the avocado a bit and I can add more and adjust to get it to the right consistency that I like. Now it's time to blend. Perfect. It is so luxe, you will not even believe it. Look at that. So creamy. Before I add this creamy sauce to my pasta, I'm gonna grab one more thing. Just grab some arugula from the fridge. I love adding this to this pasta because it gives this really nice peppery bite to it. All right, time to assemble. Got my sauce, gonna add this into my pasta. You might think you put cream in this, but you didn't, I promise. I'm gonna add my tomatoes. Just a little burst of something sweet in with this avocado cream sauce. Now I'm just gonna mix in my arugula. What's great about this pasta as well is that you can eat it immediately, but you can also refrigerate it to have as a pasta salad the next day. We love a leftover. We love a meal prep situation. So 
that too much? There's never too much. <laughs> what is a portion? <laughs> Some freshly ground black pepper and a pinch of flaky sea salt. And that is it. But one last thing. Can't forget to take a photo. I didn't do all of this for nothing. I love this. I'm gonna frame this. I'm gonna put this on my wall. Okay, here I go. Gotta get some arugula, some pasta in there. Okay. I love myself. <laughs> it's so creamy, you honestly would never know that there's no cream or butter in this. It's crazy. I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassie Post, and each week I'm here with the must-have fashion and beauty products at a price you'll like in Style Finder. I'm Shop All Day contributor Makon Dovu, and I'm bringing you industry insiders and those in the know to share all the buzzworthy products sweeping social media in influencer trends. And I'm Shop Today editorial director Adriana Brock, and I know shopping trends. I seek out new and notable products so you don't have to in editor's picks. This is Shop All Day, Today Bestsellers. Hi, I'm Chassie Post and we're back today with a new episode of Shop All Day. And today, we are all about bestsellers. We did our homework and found best-selling and cult favorite products in fashion, hair, beauty, even a must-have for your furry friend. Yeah, we can't forget about them. So get ready to take notes or we've actually made it easy for you. See that QR code at the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. Or you can text shop to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's get to it. Get ready, everyone. This is the Amazon coat, the cult favorite, the number one bestseller, the viral sensation that shoppers cannot get enough of. So it's from Orle, and I have to tell you that this coat is as warm and cozy as it looks. But what I think shoppers love so much about it is its fashion and function. Yes, it's 100% down, and the brand says it is water resistant, it is even wind resistant, but it is also really, really stylish. To me, it looks like a designer jacket for a fraction of the price. And I think shoppers really respond to, it's really modern style. So it's got six big functional pockets, but it kind of gives it that cargo look. Plus it's got that very on-trend oversized silhouette. It's boxy, it's modern looking, and it hits at a really, really flattering part on the leg. So it gives you a little bit more coverage so you can run around town in your leggings. And check out the interior. I just love this orange contrast and the hood. It's this plush Sherpa fabric. And it comes in lots of different styles, lots of different colors. And I have to tell you, every time I walk down the street, I see these, it is just that popular. Next up, how about a best-selling jogger with over 80 2,000 ratings. These are the Track Cup Joggers by Leggings Depot, and shoppers say they can't get enough of these must-haves. First of all, they're a really flattering silhouette. They're sort of a hybrid between a legging and a slim cut jogger, and they're made out of this buttery soft material that the brand says actually happens to be moisture wicking. So it gives them lots of versatility. You can wear them while you're lounging around at home or you can wear them in the gym. Also, they've got pockets. Who doesn't love pockets? You've got two on the sides and then there's a little hidden pocket in the back. Great to put in a credit card or your key. And they come in so many different colors and patterns. So it is no wonder that these are such a mega bestseller. Moving on to the number one best-selling flat on Amazon. These are the Amazon Essentials Women's Belize Ballet Flats. And these flats have over 37,000 ratings. That's a lot of passion for a ballet flat, but I totally get it. I'm passionate about my ballet flats. Why? Because whenever I wear them, I feel so pulled together. They are a classic. They have been a 
huge trend since 1940, and they're not going anywhere. And there are lots of iconic ballet flats out there that are a really high price point. So when I find a great looking ballet flat for an incredible price, I'm sorry, I get really excited. And these are a great price and a great style. They have a wonderful, flexible rubber sole. And that's one thing that you don't always see on a ballet flat. Sometimes the soles are really thin and made out of leather. So I love that with these, you get a little shock absorption and the footbed is really soft and plush. And these come in so many different styles and colors. Here we've got the black patent leather, which is a never go wrong. It's gonna go with everything in your closet. And I love the metallic gold. They've also got leopard print. They've also got suede-like finishes. They have such a great selection. Next, this item is not only one of the best-selling bags on Amazon, it's also a personal fave. So this is the Greenwald Crossbody Bag by Aldo. And I have to tell you, I love anything crossbody. I wear my crossbody bag every single day. Why? Because I love being hands-free and also it actually adds a little jazz. It acts as an accessory when I wear it. So I can be running around town in leggings, I'm wearing my crossbody and I look pretty stylish. But let me tell you what I like so much about this bag. First of all, it's got two of the biggest accessory trends we're seeing out there this season, and that is the quilting detail and the chains. And with quilting, I love that this has this modern quilting, this sort of angular geometric style, which I think is really chic. Also, the chains. I love a chain. I mean, look how stylish that is. And in my opinion, the size is really perfect. It's about 12 by seven inches. So it fits your essentials without being bulky. And it comes in some really great colors and even patterns and these classics, the bright red, the patent leather again, and this wonderful neutral. They even have some great faux snake patterns. Now onto some mega best-selling beauty. This shampoo brush and scalp massager from Hida has over 105,000 ratings and is a top seller on Amazon. So what I think is so exciting about this massage brush is that you can use it in three different ways. You can use it in the shower to help give your hair a great shampoo and you can also use it as a scalp massager. You don't even have to be in the shower. And I also think that this is a great brush to use as a detangler once you get out of the shower. Next, we have a rinse out hair product called the Eight Second Wonder Water from L'Oreal that Shop Today editors are loving and they're not alone. This is a really popular product and what it does is you put it in your hair after the shampoo, you rinse it out, and the brand says it helps to give your hair shine, it helps to smooth your hair, and helps to give it a little bit more body. And last but not least, let's talk mascaras. This is the Maybelline Sky High Waterproof Mascara, and it is a beauty fan fade. The brand says that it's infused with bamboo extract and fibers, so it helps to give you you know, more voluminous lashes, and the brand says that it doesn't get flaky or smudge. Also, here's something I really like about it. Check out the mascara wand. It's called the Flex Tower Wand, and that really helps you get in there with those tiny little lashes that can sometimes be hard to reach. And lastly, waterproof, right? Sometimes waterproof mascaras can feel hard and heavy. This mascara is also infused with rosehip oil, according to the brand. And what's so great about that is it helps make your lashes feel a little bit lighter, which I think shoppers really appreciate in a waterproof mascara. And the price is right. Let's run through our products one more time. We've got the Amazon Orlay Thicken Down Jacket, the Cuff Joggers, the Ballet Flats, the Aldo Greenwald Crossbody Bag, the shampoo brush and scalp massager, eight second wonder water, and the Maybelline Sky High waterproof mascara. And just so you know, 
Today works with affiliate partners and earns commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Plus, this episode solely features products available on Amazon, which has an affiliate relationship with today. That's it for Style Finder. You won't want to go away. We have Grammy, award-winning artist and entrepreneur, and Real Housewife of Atlanta, Candy Burris, with more of her favorite bestsellers. I wonder what made her list. Stay tuned. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. It's a can't-miss summer on today. They are walking strong, elegant, and pretty easy to prepare. How to cut costs on your vacation. Vicki has the answers. Every single thing you need for the best summer yet. Only on today. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. It's a can't-miss summer on today. They are walking strong, elegant, and pretty easy to prepare. How to cut costs on your vacation? Vicki has the answers. Every single thing you need for the best summer yet. Only on today. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. It's a can't-miss summer on today. They are walking strong, elegant, and pretty easy to prepare. How to cut costs on your vacation? Vicki has the answers. Every single thing you need for the best summer yet. Only on Today. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hi there. Welcome back. I'm Makon Zovu, and this is Influencer Trends, where I'll be talking to industry insiders, and they'll share their favorite products and must-have items to shop for right now. And don't forget the QR code at the bottom of your screen. Use the camera on your smartphone and scan it to shop these products. Or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. Today's show is all about our favorite best-selling products, and we turn to Grammy Award-winning artist, entrepreneur, and Real Housewife of Atlanta, Candy Burris, to ask her what made her list. Oh, Candy Burris, I am so excited to chat with you. How are you today? <laughs> I am great. How are you? I am doing great. Are you coming to us from Atlanta right now? Yes, I am in Atlanta at my office, and then I'm just happy to be talking to you. <laughs> oh, listen, I am super excited that you're here. Candy. we followed your journey over the years as a singer, an entrepreneur, a reality star. I mean, there's so many different hats that you wear. I'm curious to know, what does success mean to you right now? What does it look like to you? That's kind of crazy that you asked that question, because I don't really think there's like one thing that I would say, but I think success is when you can also build up everyone around you, build up your community, build up your friends. When you can look back and say, not only did I get myself to a certain level of accomplishing my dreams and stuff, but it's when you help other people, it, you know, to be able to accomplish their dreams as well. That's when you know you really made an impact. Absolutely. Okay, so let's talk about some of your iconic songs, right? I mean, there's so many hits. It would take me the whole hour to just name them. But if we were to put a song title over the course of your life right now or the phase of life that you're in right now, what would it be? 
Oh, okay. If I have to go by one of the songs that I've written for someone else, I would say So Good. And I feel like that song, it makes me feel good. But the whole point of it is saying, you know, I'm doing so good. You know, it's like for anybody who doubted you, anybody who hated on you or whatever, it's like, it's good because I'm doing so good. So hate all you want, look at me now. <laughs> I love that. And that song is such a classic. That's my workout song. It gets me super excited. It just gets me in the right zone. So you brought some items here, some best sellers, some top sellers. Let's start with the first one. Are you actually wearing the two piece? Yes. I love so, it. So the reason why, I know this is, this isn't what I would normally wear on the Today Show, but I just wanted to show you something that was just very comfortable, cool. Sometimes what I find is because I'm always doing like interviews or this or that, like normally I have a lot of dressy clothes, but I don't have a lot of lounge wear. I don't have a lot of chill outfits. So I just found a couple of, you know, cool chill outfits that I could just leave the house, have a good day in. And yeah, I wanted to share this one with you because you know, tie dye is in, everybody loves tie dye or whatever. And, and this one is comfortable, so yeah. I love that. First of all, the color looks great on you. And I'm curious to know, you love casual outfits. What does Todd, your husband, like on you? Does he like the more glam kind of candy? Oh. Or does he, he likes the casual, I'm wearing my drop outfit. Yes, it's funny you asked that because a friend of mine just and, you know, asked that question to him the other day. It was like, it was like, you know, what is it that you like to see Candy in? And he was like, honestly, I like when she wears sneakers and oh. jeans. And he's like, I just like when she's chill, you yeah. know, because you know, I guess because we do over the top a lot, you know, taping most of the year. You know, it's always, you know, how like, housewives we got to be done up, girl, done up all the time. So I think he appreciates it more when it's just chill and relaxed. And you do it so well. Okay, let's move on to the next item that you have. These crayons are so cool. They're made of beeswax? Yes. So, it's called all of us skin tone beeswax crayons, okay? But the thing that I find so cool is like any skin tone you can find. I don't know if you realize it, but a lot of times when you get your crayon box as a kid, I don't know about everybody, a lot of us, we can't find that perfect color that represents our skin tone. And so the woman who created this, um, she found for her child, it inspired her to make crayons that represented every skin tone. So all of us, that's what it's oh, all about. That's so beautiful. Listen, representation matters and it's fun where you can yeah. make it educational and entertainment at the same time. Speaking of that, this book, Hair Love, I'm obsessed with, right? I know, it's so good. Yes, my son is Ace and my daughter's Blaze. So we definitely read together. This one right here is a good one. They won an award for this, okay? So it's not just us that's recognizing it, the world is recognizing how great this book really is. Um, I think it's amazing. The illustration is amazing. The story is amazing. Um, it Obviously, it talks about hair. So many people, once again, you know, when it comes to um, people of color, you know, and our hair types, honey, some people are just, you know, interested in what is, what is our hair doing? And so it was cool for this book to be able to explain that, telling the story of a father and his daughter. So I love this book. And by the way, it's narrated by Blue Ivy as well. So whether you get the audio or you get the physical book, this is absolutely great. Speaking of narration, let's talk about sound. These Bose speakers are fantastic. Tell me about them. Okay. Now, you know, I'm into music, so I'm a music girl. And, um, I travel a lot. You can use this at home or you can travel with it. But the cool thing about it, you can, you know, be out at the beach. We love taking this with us, me and Todd, when we go travel. I actually bought this in multiple colors. I know it sounds crazy, but something like this, for some reason, I end up like my kids take them from me and, and whatever. So it's like um, I had a blue one, I had an orange one. Ask me where any of them are. <laughs> The only one I have left is this black one, okay? Oh. I love it. I think more so because the sound quality is amazing. Which is so great. Listen, they're small, but they're mighty. Like, they pack a lot of sound, and that's what we love about Bose. Um, last but not least, let's talk about this water pick. A lot of people weren't able to get to the dentist this past year, obviously, so this is a great pick. Tell me about it. So, I got put on to the water pick. It 
kind of pressure washes your teeth. That's kind of like a simple way to try to put it, but it gets all into the crevices and the creases and the cracks and make sure that it gets out all of the stuff that you may not be able to reach. It's electric. I love electric toothbrushes, the water pick. I love all of that. So it is amazing. You would be amazed at what it will get out of your gums if you try it. Like hands down, I promise you it is bomb. I mean, I guess it, it kind of feels like if you went to the dentist and let them, you know, do the yeah. deep cleaning on your teeth, it kind of feels like that, but you get to do it at home. You get to do it every day and it's like flossing. Yeah. I mean, but yeah. it really just cleans out your teeth. My sister has one and she has been telling me about it. So I'm so excited that you included it here. Okay, Candy, we're going to wrap here. Thank you for sharing your pics. This was so great chatting with you and we'll see you really soon. Thank you. It's great to talk to you, and I hopefully I will see you very soon. Absolutely. Now, let's run through all the products one more time. The Drop Women's Fleece Sweatpant and Sweatshirt. The Natural Beeswax Skin Tone Crayons for Coloring. The Hair Love Book. The Bose SoundLink Color 2 Portable Bluetooth Wireless Speaker. And the Waterpix Sonic Infusions 2.0. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Up next, Adriana Brock continues with more top sellers, including a launch from the brand behind one of the most popular facial razors. Do you use one? You don't know what it is? Stay tuned. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. It's a can't-miss summer on today. Bam! They are walking strong, elegant, and pretty easy to prepare. How to cut costs on your vacation. Vicki has the answers. Every single thing you need for the best summer yet. Only on today. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? Jackson now weekdays at five on NBC News now for breaking news in our changing world download the NBC News app welcome back to you today we got a lot to celebrate yes. on this Wednesday morning it's good to have you along with us you don't know when your moment's coming but when it does you take it everybody good and that's it for breaking news in our changing world download the NBC News app these days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Adriana Brock and we've been having so much fun showing you products today that all of our viewers can't get enough of. And we're not done yet. I have more must have items that happen to be best sellers. And if you have a furry friend like I do, well, I have a popular product for them too. And remember, see that QR code at the bottom of your screen? You could scan the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to all the products on the show today or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all of the products we're sharing with you today. All right, so let's get started. This first one is a long sleeve turtleneck top that makes a great wardrobe staple. And it's also loved by so many editors on the SHOP Today team. 
It combines the classic look of a turtleneck with the comfort of an oversized silhouette, which makes it a winter must have. We really love this sweater because it comes in a wide range of sizes and colors, and you can easily style it with anything in your closet from your favorite pair of leggings for a casual look or a pair of jeans and boots for something a little bit more elevated. Today.com readers really love this style, but they're not alone. It actually has over 22,000 reviews on Amazon. And this next product is also a winter essential because you're gonna need this in your beauty routine. It is a brand new launch from the brand behind one of the most popular facial razors that our editors love. And it is so cool because Chic Hydro is a dermaplaning tool and it's a wand that helps improve the look and feel of your skin by gently sweeping away dull skin and peach fuzz. This tool also has a really cool ergonomic design. So when you're using it, it's really easy and it has a smooth edge. So it's gonna glide through skin. And one of the bonus parts about this is it comes with a few refills. So it's definitely one of those beauty products you didn't know you needed. This product is really great. And another beauty basic everyone should be using this winter is a hydrating serum from CeraVe. This is a tried and true brand that the Shop Today team and Today.com readers really love. It's super affordable and it's packed with hyaluronic acid, which is an ingredient a lot of dermatologists recommend to replenish skin's hydration. So think of a serum as a concentrated version of a face cream and you put the two together, you're gonna get this incredible hydrating serum that's perfect for dried out winter skin. The Shop Today editors really love this little bottle and say it packs a punch. One of our editors on the team actually joked that it's kind of like a drink of water for your skin. And I say, what more could you ask for? Okay, and moving on to home, we have these really cool pantry organizers. So I love a product that does more than one thing and this is it. So this is a great product to organize everything from a jam-packed refrigerator to all the kids' snacks, you keep the produce in one place, and even your beauty products. So really versatile. What I love about them too is that you could stack them together in a nested style so when you're not using them, they don't take a bunch of space up, but you can also stack them on top of each other when they are in use. You can also use these to organize the pantry, under the sink in the kitchen, or the bathroom. Either way, it's a really versatile piece that you're gonna use all over the house. And because they're clear, you're gonna see everything. You don't have to go digging around looking for stuff. Super easy. Plus, you can't beat the value. These also come in a pack of eight, two different sizes. This product is really great. And this next product is a Shop Today editor favorite that makes meal prepping so easy. It has two compartments. The first one up top, stores about a cup and a half of food in it. And then the one below stores two cups. And it also comes with cutlery, which is really great. And they're stackable, so they're not gonna take up a bunch of space. But you can still pack your full lunch in here. Another hack that I really like with this is you can get one different color for everybody in the family and assign everyone a different color so that they know that their lunch is ready to go. And if you love enjoying a glass of white wine or rosé, this cool tool is for you. The wine chiller stick is a really quick and easy way to chill your favorite bottle when it's at room temperature. All you have to do is pour out one glass and then you stick the tube in and it's super easy to use. So all you have to do is stick it in the freezer like you're making a tray of ice and then you get out your favorite bottle of wine, you pour out a glass, and then you put it in this chiller. It's super easy to use, and in just a few minutes, it's gonna cool your bottle and keep it that way. The design also has a rubber stopper, so you don't have to worry about drips or spills when you're done. All you have to do is wash it, put it in the freezer to store it until next time. And we can't forget about our furry friends. This cozy bed will keep them nice and comfortable. My dog Rocco really loves this bed, and so does my producer's dog Rosie. And we are not alone. This donut dog bed has over 53,000 human reviews. It's super popular on Instagram, it has a round, really cool design, and it's super fuzzy and shaggy to really keep them cozy and warm. And it also has a raised rim, so that's gonna give them the neck support that they need for their little heads. It also comes in a bunch of different sizes, so cats and dogs of all sizes can really enjoy this cozy bed. So, let's run through the products one more time. We have the long sleeve turtleneck, the Chic Hydro Silk Dermaplaning Wand, the CeraVe Hydrating Face Serum, the Pantry Organizers, the Bento Stackable Bento Lunchbox, the Wine Chiller Cooling Stick, and the Calming Donut Dog Bed. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. 
And that's a wrap on Editor's Picks and our show today. This episode solely features products available on Amazon, which has an affiliate relationship with today. It's been fun showing all of our favorite top sellers. Tune in next week for another episode of Shop All Day. that you guys have been all together? All together, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know that wild sensation where you're like, oh, it was yesterday and yet yeah. a lifetime yeah. ago, or a couple. Yeah, and I think this show, you know, more than a lot of shows, it really is, a, it was a family. The thing is, Max, we're part of a family. You know, family's the most important thing in our lives. We were, you know, together for a very long time. I mean, the kids that were on the show would say, like, they don't remember life before Parenthood. Mm, yeah. They grew up on the show. Yeah. Right, and we all saw them grow up. Yeah. We saw them grow up, yeah. Well, I live by Eminem. That's great to see. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> Max was in there. I go, what are you doing? He goes, getting liquor. I go, what? Max? No, you're, yeah. <laughs> I go, get the f home, right? <laughs> And I'm like, we were just filming here, and you were 12. <laughs> I go, oh my like, God. I'm 20. I'm like, so. Right. He's a wow. drinker. <laughs> so, <laughs> Sorry, Max. He hangs out no, with no. Liam, my son, my wow. my real son. Your real son. So your real son wow. hangs out with Max. your on-screen son. Mm -hmm. What's that like? They're a lot alike. Wow. Liam and Max are a lot alike, and I'm finding that I'm a lot like Max's character, Max, in the in the show. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of cool. Wow. That's yeah. Cool. So you're more like Max than you are Christine. Wait. Oh, way, way more. Really? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> well, you, Larry might know. <laughs> I'm just a little different. I don't know. Christina had it together. I mean, I have it together. <laughs> but I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> have you seen the roles that you play? bleed into real life? Uh, for me, it happens more at that time that you're living the parallel life with the character, which is one of the coolest things about doing TV. That's, uh, that, you know, six years. We did six years, so I got to grow a lot. We all got to grow a lot as people, and then the characters had their growth and we learn from each other along the way. So there's, yeah, there's a lot of like bleeding over in that. Hi. Hi, sweetie. You like a fish. You want me to teach you how to swim like a fish? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Nice entrance. Thanks. But then you're onto a new character and you're bleeding over with her, so. You're giving really good answers. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> there definitely was a um, over, you know, big overlap while we were shooting where life and art were imitating each other. You know, yeah. we'd be uh, things I was bringing from my marriage or my parenting into the show's dynamic was also working the other way where I'd be having things happen in real life that I would say, wait, well, in the show, this is what happened. Maybe we should handle it this way. So it was actually this yeah. kind of virtuous loop between life and art. Have you watched some of Parenthood? Have you realized how, how much it still holds up? Y yeah. <laughs> I've not watched. It's, it's, I, am I, I, I stopped I watching it after season one. You stopped watching it, so you didn't oh, watch you season seen it? Oh, you should watch it. It's you a good should show. watch it. Yeah. 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 It's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Check it out. No, yeah. people love it. People say, Chris, you're Christine. I'm like, what? No, I mean, 
I stopped. Wait, when was the breast cancer thing? Season what? Four. Season that was four, season yeah. four. Oh, then yeah. maybe it was season three. See, I don't know. And so after the season, I just don't like to watch myself. I would. Wa I like your stuff. <laughs> just, then you should watch it and and watch fast us. forward. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I will. <laughs> You're gonna watch it. That's really this. good. I but the wild thing is watching Betamax. old episodes, oh, okay, and oh, there's no God. cell. There's Betamax. no iPhones, right? What? There's no iPhones in the first few seasons. Oh, really? Are you sure? Yes, I'm positive. <laughs> it's all flip oh, that's phones, right, right? That was 2008. I guess so. I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we can put those in and post now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Man, who's this? These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. Let's go. This is a critical choke point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Do you think as times have changed, uh, the show would be different if you were making it today? You know, the thing about this show is of everything that I've done, it's the most, it's the show where I brought most of my you know, autobiographical story to it, you know, like there's a story with you know, um, you know, Max, um, which came very, was very close to, you know, my life. Are you mad at me because I have Asperger's? I'm, I'm not mad at you because you have Asperger's. Never. The breast cancer story, we did that show while my wife was going through breast cancer. So the show, it's, I, I you know, it's, and, and so many of the stories, came from what our lives, whether it was the, my, mine or friends or family or the actors or the writers of the show. It was, um, it's, it's such a, it was such a, it was so unique in that way that I can't really, you can't, it's sort of like, I can't judge it by like, how would I do it now? Your life you know, is different now. Yeah, you're just, it was just right. who so we were at the time that we yeah. did it. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't usually, I hardly ever go back and watch you know shows that I that I that I've done and I was I have to say it was like it was an incredibly you know moving experience to watch the show um for everybody I don't know all right okay, this when is my recital I think it's the music. very vital to rock all right that's right no. on top it's tricky it's tricky thank you no I meant like I meant like slow dancing I'm not a slow dancing but it doesn't matter what the music is baby you got you got to feel that in your body. Start here. Oh, yeah, sorry. You might feel it in the legs, arms, feet, shoulders, your rib cage, all of them. The thing that I thought we did really well on the show is that we we stayed with those stories, you know, like they have yeah. they have a son with autism. Well, it wasn't like six episodes later, it was like, oh, you know, we're doing another story. You know, we stayed with that story. Mm -hmm. yeah. When we yeah. did the, the breast cancer, we did yeah. the breast cancer storyline. <clears throat> I remember the first thing that the doctor said to my wife when she had breast cancer is, it's gonna, you're gonna have a really tough year. And, um, and I was like, okay, so it's not gonna be less than a year. Hopefully it won't be more than a year. I love you all so much. I just wanna say that. Um, and uh, there's something that I, I need to tell you. And so when we decided to do that story, I knew it was a season long story. It was not a story that would be a few episodes. I, I think the last time I saw the three of you together was the episode where 
you are all partying and dancing and then you're sitting down and you pull out a clump of your hair. Mm-hmm. And, and that was the moment where mm-hmm. we were at a bar a mm-hmm. yeah. and they were trying to cheer me up, right? Yeah. And Dax directed that, I think. He did. There oh, was yeah, a right. lot in that episode. Yeah. yeah. That was probably one of my favorite but scariest episodes. Sorry. Right. Yeah, Beautiful sure. queen that you are. Oh, that's the thing. It's like, it's like, does he respect me or? That is something. You know what? It's about time that to start is getting rid of so well, that. You were being you so you were dancing, so you know, it's just like, there on that <laughs> yeah. Do you want to go? Should we go home? The other thing about our show, which you you did, so whether you knew to do this or not, it's such a different show because we weren't out in the world talking about politics or religion or fighting. It was about a wonderful family that had their own stresses. And that would sprinkle in here and there. But I think that's why people loved it so much because they felt comfort and they felt like they could identify with the Bravermans right. and they wanted to be a part of joy, which is now, ironically, we're circling back to within mm-hmm. the world. Like you asked Jason how he would do it differently if you know, things changed in his family. And I just said to Joy, what about the world? Mm-hmm. You know, like, then I thought we would kind of, it would somehow come through, but at the same time, it was, it's such a real show, it's not an escapism for people, but it's still feeling, it's hope, it's love, it's laughter crying, it's, 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 it's humanity. You and your writers were all so true to your own lives and everything that you were being true to, like it resonates universally mm-hmm. and timelessly. That's, right. that's the way that you do it. The more, the more awesome. specificity, Absolutely. the more broadly right. it appeals. Mm-hmm. That's so important. Like, people are just fighting constantly. And the way that you guys did this was n- not that. And it wasn't like being Pollyanna, like you're gonna be like, look, I just made a pie. That, that's, that's fake. So all of that coming together, it's like you wouldn't sort of exploit religions, politics, whatever people feel in their own life. This would resonate, and it still does with everybody, like across the world. The fans that I talk to and have now become part of my family. Um, ironically, like I give them my phone number, and a lot of people have my number. <laughs> it was almost as though you could see your family's messiness reflected in this family, but yeah. then also be inspired by by the love, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. As much as the characters were informed by our lives, like we could also learn from the characters, so and much. because because all of the conflicts that came up all the time were jumped on. You know, they, those conversations that had to be had were had immediately. Like, I'm driving to your house and we're gonna have this conversation, mm-hmm. which is so admirable, you know? It's, it's when they, they're not addressed and they fester that they're that much mm-hmm. harder in relationships, so everything just being tackled all the time there's and being articulated like so this. well. Yeah. There so hasn't, good. there's yeah. never been a show like this and yeah. I have not seen one since. I have not. I really have not. And I'm not saying it because I'm a part of this group, but essentially all of us are a family, and I would take a bullet for any one of you. I mean that. Any one of you or your children. I would. That's just... I'm a Cancerian. <laughs> um, um, but I, ju- I, I have so much love and so much respect and so much gratitude for you. Mm. All of you. And that's never gone away. And I... I you know, it, whenever I see you guys, it's like we just picked up where we left off. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. You That's guys, family. Mm-hmm. You guys are, I mean, it, I can family. see it. You guys are still, mm-hmm. you guys are still a family. Yeah, for sure. We should play the song now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to you today. we got a lot to celebrate yes. on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it! Yeah. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. 
These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Talking about uh, some of the lessons that you learned, were there some lessons or were there pieces of advice that you were given during the show or you heard others given during the show that you've now taken into your own lives? The way the characters were written, like I was saying, to always jump on the hard conversations that needed to be had, that's, that was the biggest takeaway from me. And I'm only now, after having wrapped now, I'm a parent, and so uh, I've taken that with me. Yeah. When you started shooting, were you a parent? No. And now when after you watch, <laughs> yes. it's almost like you're seeing it with a whole different set of eyes. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah, same here. I was not a parent before I am now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm still not a parent. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm pretty good with that. <laughs> interestingly enough, when you were shooting with Dax, Dax was a brand new parent and you were not a parent and you guys had to reverse roles on screen, right? Right. Wait, what? Because you were so, the parent for the screen. Yeah, I'm a very, I'm a, I'm a very seasoned TV parent. Right. Like yeah. I don't and never wanted kids myself, but right. I seem every job I get, I am a parent. So I, I feel like I know a little bit about right. it, yeah. and I get to give them back. Right. Yeah. At the end of the day, I'm a really good TV parent. <laughs> Just kind of touching on your favorite scene or, or one of the most powerful scenes that, that you remember. Uh, I, I gotta say, for you, the one that brought me to tears, like uncontrollable tears, was when you left a message for your family if you were to pass. Do you remember, do you remember shooting that? I have the chills right now, yeah. I don't remember, whenever I film anything, I don't remember any, I like black out. I do too. <laughs> I, I do, black I black out. Um, but that, that was the hardest one for sure. I may not always be with you the way that I want to be. But I will never leave your side. I'll always be with you. That was the toughest one. And then the other one was, oh, the shaving of the head. Mm -hmm. Because I felt such guilt, too. I felt so guilty. Because I didn't, I was not really experiencing what Kathy, your wife, was going through, and um, and then, and then fear also, mm. as a human being, like my kids were like, Mom, you know, you're not an actor. Well, that's my job, but like I didn't go to acting school, so I don't know how to. I don't have a technique, so I don't. It's hard for me to get rid of the person. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. okay. And there's a lot of people, from, and so I. I I would go home and try to get rid of it somehow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Christina is, I, beyond, like, unequivocally the best character and the most amazing person in the world. And so is your wife. Yeah. <laughs> she is. So. Uh, Joy, how about you? Do you remember? Um, favorite scene? Yeah, what, what, what was your favorite or, or most difficult scene? Um, I would just say my favorite scene was like the wedding because like make you happy, make your dreams come true. Nothing that I wouldn't do. Go to 
I had a great wedding in my real life, and then I had a great wedding on television. So that's always the best. It wasn't the it's rain great. scene. It wasn't the the making no, out with Dax I mean, like that notebook cool. style. I mean, like, <laughs> I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure, that was great too. <laughs> yeah, was that fun. was a really good moment. Yeah, that I just was... have very earned moments. <laughs> yeah, my hair loves it. Um, <laughs> you look fresh. <laughs> you look beautiful. Um, I just think, like, overall, for me, the, the entire experience of working on this show, I mean, still the greatest job I've ever had. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean that. Yeah. Like, yeah. real talk. <laughs> um, and just the being able to work with such amazing people from from Jason and, and Larry and the writers and directors and, of course, all the actors. I mean, it was, seriously, it was, a, it was the greatest gig ever, mm -hmm. still, to ever. this day. And I've been working for a while. Yeah. Um, so I just, to me, it was all kind of fond memories. It was the sweetest gig. I mean, I, it's hard for me to pick and choose yeah. what's the best part of it, but all mm -hmm. of it. And Erica, your, your character was on an emotional roller coaster. You dealt with yeah. some of the most uh, the hardest internal struggles of, of all the characters. What do you say your most difficult scene was? Difficult is a confusing one, but um, I mean, obviously it was extremely emotional when she found out she couldn't have the baby. It makes it really, really hard to get pregnant. And um, it's just really unlikely. Sorry. You can't apologize to me for something like that. I'm so, so, so. I just... That, that was that was like the moment that was mm. the worst mm. Mm. <laughs> you've been trying to make me cry this whole interview <laughs> <laughs> I know. you're crying I, I do want to say you know as a man watching this one of the things that that I appreciated was you were all super moms and it almost felt as though this time was a time where women were grappling with this idea of like you you need to be everything and you have to be a super mom you have to have this career and at the same time dealing with both stigmas and you played both those stigmas yeah. you played the mom that could do everything and then you played the mom that walked away for her family yeah what was that like it's interesting because i i, I am a, a career woman but um i really get that struggle of retaining your identity it it is it is a thing that so so many parents go through, and especially moms usually, um, of retaining your identity when you're no longer the most important person in your life. You, you've clearly put other people before yourself and then you have to remember to take care of yourself and to take care of what your hopes and dreams and interests and skills are and, and um, just give them time too. So. It was really cool to explore that and then really cool to also experience that <laughs> afterward. Jason, was that the intent? Did you set out with, with this in mind? Because it, it was pioneering at the time, right? We got to look at all of these families. We got to look at them as one big you know, family together, but we got to watch each of them and see how they all had their own kind of struggles and challenges and um, things that they brought. And that was, for, for Julia's character, that was you know, definitely, um, you know, a big part of that of the story we, we wanted to explore. It was, it's so beautiful that you have four families, or yes. more, to, just variations on a theme every time. Like, tackle the theme from four completely different right. viewpoints and see how everybody takes it on. And, and then kids' kids and, you know, Craig and Bonnie, like, everybody got to look at this thing from different angles and embrace as many points of view as possible. It was really interesting. Yeah. It's, yeah, huge cast. <laughs> <laughs> Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now.
Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, can we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Tell me about what's brought you here today. Fans. <laughs> it's, it's really cool that uh, the murmurs of a parenthood reunion have been very passionate. And you can hear so, some of them in the background. Yeah. I mean, even today, the fans want to see you back together. Yeah, they do. They want our family back on television. If you had to sum up the legacy of parenthood, how would you do that? I think Jason created a world that was both realistic and aspirational. Mm. And so I think the idea of real families with real issues and real struggles, but at the end of the day, they would find the love would bring them back together. And so it was both something that people could relate to and aspire to. And I think that's what makes the show so special. And that's what Jason created. Wow. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mic drop. <laughs> that was a good answer. Yeah, I feel like, you know, the show is called Parenthood. And, it's, and it shows how hard parenthood is, but how worth it it is. Mm. Yeah. And all different aspects of parenthood. Yeah. There's parenthood, there's grandparenthood, there's sibling love, there's yeah. all yeah. of it. One of the things about the show that I would say is that the show allowed all these stories to breathe. We watched all the nuanced moments. I oh, God. Who's singing this? This is us. Uncle Crosby helped us make it. it is so you like it, Do I like it? I love it. Good. If we're going to do it again when you turn 80, Dad yeah. said we can use a real band then. That'll be fun. I'll, I can sell the CDs to Safeway. Come on. There it is. Yeah. It wasn't concerned with telling stories that were, you know, you know big, you know, plot-driven types of stories. We were, at, we were able to really watch it was like watching real life happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and not wrapped up in pretty bows every 42 right. minutes. And not wrapping yeah. them up, you know, so quickly. Yeah. And, and sometimes letting things be unresolved. Yeah. And, um, you know, that I think is the thing that I, find, I think was so beautiful about the show. I, I hate to put you on the spot in front of your, your, your television children almost. But yeah. <laughs> Who's my favorite? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Monica's always told me that it's her. It's the first thing she said to me. Said, Literally, like, you better, yeah. is that true? You're my, I'm your favorite. <laughs> Wait, what were you gonna ask? Um, it's, it's on the record now. But you it's on the record. Shoot. Yeah, which is my favorite. Well, no. which, of these, <laughs> which, you if you had to choose a scene, which scene? Oh, a scene. You, yeah, if you oh had to choose God. a scene, which scene do you think defines parenthood? The thing that's so great about the show is there are so many scenes. You can't define it with one scene because the, it's a true ensemble. Mm -hmm. It is a true ensemble. It's not like, it's really about this person, but we have other characters. It's without everybody, it wouldn't be the show that it was. So you can't say that. The, that said, that said, you know, in the pilot episode, when Peter Krause's character says to his dad that there's something going on with his son. Yes. Dad, Come there's on. something wrong with my son. There's something wrong. What do you mean? There's something wrong. And I'm going to need you to help me. That's a moment that I felt was a very, it was a very scary thing for me to write that scene. 
and it's one that made me feel like that's the path that we're on when I saw that scene. That's the path we're on in tell in in the stories we want to tell in the shows. We want to be that. And it was honest. that that moment of vulnerability. An adult man asking his, his father, father coming he to his help. father, saying that I I need help and um, and something's going on and because men you know um, they don't want the men have good and I'm one of them have good strong denial systems so we don't immediately go to that place so for him to say that was to his father was incredibly moving to me how vulnerable it was and of course you know sit, you know writing it was one thing and then to see Peter and Craig do it was very there was just but you know I say even as I say that I can think of I'm, I'm thinking of a dozen others I'm thinking of hundreds of others <laughs> mm -hmm. which was to my point well, This is your pop star plus for today. We appreciate your business. All right, coming up. We spoke with the cast of a very buzzy show. It's taken over TikTok. It's called The Summer I Turned Pretty. And the young and talented cast gave us the full scoop. And calling all Stranger Things fans. No spoilers, don't worry. But Sadie Sinks, who plays Max on Stranger Things, was in our building. And of course, we had to ask her everything that she could tell us about this fourth volume of the show. So we'll show you that. And later, we're continuing our love for the one and only Harrison Ford. We're going to go back to the 80s for his 80th, a flashback to his Raiders of the Lost Ark days. That is still all to come, but first, here are today's pop star headlines. Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, who also happens to be the chief impact officer of the Better Up Company, is out with a new project called Transform with Mental Fitness. The film is created to drive awareness on how a mental fitness practice can be beneficial regardless of background or even profession. We've got an exclusive first look here in the clip. You'll see Prince Harry sitting down with record-setting Olympian Chloe Kim to chat about a pro active approach to mental health. How would you describe the relationship between the mind and the body when it comes to operating at peak performance? It would be unrealistic for me to expect to go out there and, you know, land an amazing run, learn a new trick if I wasn't feeling good mm -hmm. mentally. And um, I can't expect myself to perform at mm -hmm. my peak when I am doubting myself and I'm feeling negative emotions. If I'm not feeling good mentally, then it will jeopardize my physical health yeah. and they go hand in hand. And so Love to see those conversations mm -hmm. happen. You can check out more of that when you head over to today.com. All right, next up, Leah Michelle. Don't rain on her parade. The actress just landed the role of Fanny Bryce in Broadway's Funny Girl, and it's a part of 13 years in the making for her. We remember her take on Barbara Streisand's iconic character during her time in Glee, and of course, this number from the show's very first season. I am the target and wham, one shot, one gunshot, yeah. and bam! Hey, Mr. Onstein, here I am. Wow. That's Savannah's favorite TV moment of all time. Oh, wow. So wow. So, so everyone should watch that today. That's awesome. They should do a duet. Can we do that? I, I well, would watch that. For, I can't sing, but it's, it's so awesome. That's it's just awesome. Awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, the casting news comes just one day after current Fanny Bryce, Beanie Feldstein, uh, announced that she would be departing from the show at the end of July earlier than originally planned. Feldstein writing online that she had made the decision to leave the production. That decided uh, to go in, quote, a different direction. As for the rest of the Funny Girl cast, there aren't any plans for a Glee reunion that we know of on stage. Michelle's former co-star Jane Lynch is set to wrap up her run as Miss Bryce uh, before the, she mm -hmm. joins the cast in September. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, okay. Interesting. Uh, yeah. 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 Well, I guess she was Mrs. Yeah, she was Bryce. Mrs. Bryce. Yes, Mrs. Yeah. Bryce. Yeah. But yes. then Leah Michelle's mm -hmm. coming. Will be in, yes, okay. when okay. it's yeah. available. Next up, Tim McGraw, even though... He
He's been busy lately, starring alongside Faith Hill in the Yellowstone prequel series, which is great, 1883. He's still finding some time to do new music. Tim told Country Music Countdown's Lon Helton he's already laid down eight new songs. McGraw teasing his upcoming music, saying, I'm always looking to beat what I did last time. I'm sure we're going to have something off the new album here, hopefully before too long. But when that actually might be, McGraw's not giving us any details. Summer concert. Yeah, we need him Tim here. McGraw. We need Tim McGraw on, Tim. here. We just need to yes. debut some of that new music right on the yeah. pillow. That's right. You can yeah. sit here on the couch. Couch yeah. We can play I'm, on the couch. We can show how to do it with the pillows. With the pillow. Don't That's you right. feel better? The pillow feels Everybody's better. Crazy. Yeah. He can have the couch. He can take it with him. Yeah. Next up, Simone Biles. Even after taking home Olympic gold, world championship medals, and a presidential medal of freedom, it turns out that Simone's still able to blend in with a crowd. Biles recently releasing this picture to her Instagram story, captioning the post, not the flight attendant trying to give me a coloring book when I board. Let's put that picture up. I said, no, I'm good. I'm 25. That's right. <laughs> Team USA superstar Simone Biles was mistaken for a child <laughs> on that side. Do you not have the picture? Let me mind. Uh, and now this screen grab is going viral. <laughs> Folks on Twitter showing support by sharing their stories of being mistaken for a kid <laughs> because of their height. One 36-year-old writing, checking in at five feet tall. Within the last couple of years, I was offered the children's menu and crayons <laughs> when I was out to dinner with my now wife and friend wow. and a friend. And uh, there you go. Great things. Oh, on funny. Call that was funny. Yeah. And that's the latest you need to know from today. Still coming up, we've got the buzz on a new show that everybody seems to be talking about. It's called The Summer I Turned Pretty. Stay tuned. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to you today. we got a lot to celebrate <laughs> on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it! Yeah. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Popstar Plus. If you are looking for a show that's full of romantic beach vibes, look no further than The Summer I Turn Pretty. We've had this one on our Swifty radar because the trailer features Taylor's version of her 2014 track, This Love. So the new show is about a summer love triangle, and it's from creator and executive producer Jenny Han. Han and the young cast spoke to us about why the show and the books that they're based on resonate with so many people. Take a look. My family spends every summer in Cousins Beach with my mom's best friend and her two sons, Conrad and Jeremiah. The Summer I Turn Pretty is about uh, a girl's coming of age. It's about her having one magical summer where a lot of dreams come true and also don't come true. <laughs> but this summer... See you guys later. It's different. Damn. You look hot. Stop flirting with my sister. I play Belly. She is a 15, almost 16-year-old girl who is entering sort of this new chapter of her life. I felt that I could relate to her a lot um, being, you know, a teenager myself and being 16 not too long ago and uh, still sort of being in that period of, of so much change and, and um, really still figuring out like who I am and, and what my my path looks like. So I, I really love being able to bring that to life um, in her shoes. Susanna told me she knew I was destined for one of her boys. I always hoped it would be Conrad, but then there was Jeremiah. You're my best friend. The love triangle is, I mean, it's really special. She has this incredible 
connection that is so different with these two boys, um, and they're such important parts of her life. She has such different love for each of them, but I think that was a lot of fun to explore and to sort of, um, you know, figure out with Chris, who plays Conrad, and Gavin, who plays Jeremiah, and then with Jenny, too, because, um, you know, she's the, she's the one who wrote it, so everyone will have, will have their own, you know, opinion about who, who they uh, favor, but I think um, when it comes down to it, it's, it's all Belly's decision and what she truly feels in her heart. What's special about the love triangle is that it's messy, is that it's young, it's, it's passionate, and when things happen quickly, it, it leaves a lot of room for people to make mistakes and a lot of room for people to try and cover up their mistakes with more mistakes and, <laughs> and just the snowball effect of things happening and the way that things affect each other and other people outside of the love triangle, you know, and how the rest of the world affects them. And I think my favorite part of playing Conrad was just trying to figure him out because he's sort of an enigma. And it really, I had a long time before, from when I got cast to when we started filming. So, and it took me the whole time to really love him, which I do. Um, but to be able to just find his ins and out, what makes him tick, why he's so mean sometimes, it was, it was fun as an actor, really fun. Jeremiah is so special to me because he is that life of the party. He is that golden retriever and he really does try to care for everyone that's in his life. And I think sometimes that's at his own peril and I think that uh, his insecurities and his lack of confidence and trying to find out who he is in, in life and, and all of his relationships, uh, I think was so much like fun and it was just so special to explore that on film. I play Stephen, uh, 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 a handsome yet vain <laughs> high achiever. He's real snarky and he's an older brother with a lot of love. I think that's like, that's a big defining characteristic. He leaves with his heart. Um, and that's probably my favorite part of playing him. That no matter what the situation is, uh, it always comes from here. Yeah, we spent an absurd amount of time together. Mm -hmm. Sean and I lived across the street from each other and we would just drive each other to work to spend more time <laughs> with yeah. each other. Like yeah. to a point where like we each got stuck at set a few times with no way home because the other person got cut early that day. And <laughs> But it was worth it because then we got to spend more time together. Yeah. Worth it. Always worth it. Boys might come and go, but a best friend is once in a lifetime. I think that The Summer I Turned Pretty really celebrates um, friendship between two women and um, how, you know, you actively make the choice um, to, to choose each other again and again. With Laurel and Susanna in this beach house and the world that they've created um, for themselves and, and for their kids, it's a choice that they make because they go back there every summer and um, they are each other's like person. And then we get to see some friendship on the um, teen side um, with Belly and Taylor and as you grow up, I think you realize in many ways you're very different people and you think if I met this person now we might not be friends but there is some connection between the two of you where you will always really value and treasure that person because they've known you um, before you were you and um, I think so it's like sort of different different aspects of friendship. Cousins is inspired by a lot of different beaches I would say Cape Cod um, it's probably the main one in my head um, because I was spending a lot of time um, in Cape Cod when I was writing the books, but I also spent time on Martha's Vineyard and the Hamptons and um, uh, the Nags Head, which is in North Carolina. Um, so I think I borrowed something from all of those beaches and I think it's why uh, these books have really um, resonated with people like um, all over because everybody has like a beach um, where they're from or that they've been to as a kid. So people like in Sweden or um, in Vietnam, you know, can kind of imagine their own beach. There's something in the show for everyone. I think that there's a relationship between the parents, between the guys, between the girls, uh, the guys and girls. And I think like it, there's so much uh, to explore for everybody. Well, guess what? You're in luck. We've got more with the show's rising star, Lola Tung. She spoke to Hoda and Michelle Collins about taking on her first series role. Everywhere I turn, people are talking about the hit prime video show, 
the summer I turned pretty we cannot wait to catch up with its breakout star Lola Tung. Okay, Lola plays Isabel, a teenager navigating a drama-filled summer with childhood crushes, beach bonfires, and the occasional dip in the pool. Take a look. One, two, three! <laughs> How's the water? <laughs> Guys, I hurt my ankle. Come on. Yes. Gotcha. Yes. Good to go, girl. Lola, hi. hi! We should point out, before we get started, this is your very first acting role, and is this your very first television appearance? It is, yes. Wait, what? Wow. I'm very excited to be here. How do you feel uh, in this moment that oh you're in? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I'm thrilled. How I'm happy are you that I'm here? It's really the question. You must be over so the moon. Excited. That's great. Well, Lola, we're so excited for you. So every now and then, like, a moment happens in your life. You're busy going to college, doing your thing. <laughs> And all of a sudden, in a minute, your life changes. What happened? Yeah, I mean, I was uh, in my second semester of my first year of college at, at Carnegie Mellon in Pittsburgh. And um, I had just started working with my manager. And she sent me this audition and was like, I think, you know, you'd be really right for it. And I uh, sent in tapes, but I, you know, was very focused on school and my what education. I was studying acting. Acting. So, okay, uh, okay good. good. But, um, yeah, I was, I was very focused on school. And... Um, I sent in these tapes, and then I heard that they wanted me to test for the role and to read for the role, and I was like, oh, my God, this could, you know, <laughs> really be something Change possibly. Change your life, yeah. I feel. Yeah. How and jealous were your freshman classmates that you got an Amazon <laughs> show? I have to imagine they were furious. <laughs> no, I mean, everyone was so supportive and so wonderful. Yeah, I, I watched the too. show. Yeah, it's, tell me. I have to say, it made me feel young. <laughs> I, I felt like I was in camp, like it was like high school summer. I mean, how, I want to yeah. ask, shooting it. Yeah. How to do like, feel as fun shooting it as it felt yeah. to watch it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And everyone in the cast is amazing and wonderful, and we, we had the best time on and off set. Oh. Well, yeah. by the way, it's two hunky guys are fighting over you. <laughs> That's kind of a cool role to be in. Yeah. Uh, you know? <laughs> Tell me about that part. <laughs> yeah, I mean, both Chris, who plays Conrad, and um, Gavin, who plays Jeremiah, are wonderful people and um, so easy to work with and, and so much fun to just be around. So I, I feel very lucky that you know, we had such a wonderful friendship, and um, it worked out great. And, and, gorgeous. Gorgeous. and you think everyone would want to date on the show after. <laughs> well, that's the thing. No, no, I, I mean, really fun, <laughs> yeah, right? well, sometimes it can get, you know, but, you know, yeah, we're... That's what I want to know about. <laughs> See, that's why you're so no, good. Yeah. What happened backstage, like behind the scenes? We all just hung out together, and really? we really, like, I made some incredibly close friends who wow. I think I'll be that's close nice. with that's for really a really long cool. time. I was just yeah. imagining what your folks might say your, or think. Your mom is here. She's actually in the building. She's <laughs> exactly. downstairs. What does she think of this turn of events? And were they all for you leaving college and taking this role? Yeah, both of my parents and, and really my whole family have, has just been so supportive yeah. throughout the entire thing. And they know that I, I love it and that I'm passionate about, you know, acting and about the show. And so they were incredibly supportive. And By the way, this show, which I've never heard of this happening, got a second season pickup before it even aired. <laughs> How was that possible? I mean, I don't get it. You know, Jenny Han's incredible, yeah. you know, writer, showrunner, uh, Creator, she's she's amazing, and uh, so you're in acting school and you're learning all the things that actors need to know, and then you get tapped in the middle of acting school to actually go act. You have to memorize the lines, mm -hmm. and I don't know. Do you have a photographic memory? How do you Ooh, no. how do you remember <laughs> lines? Um, I mean, I think it's just a matter of, of running through them, and we usually get new sides, or I mean, you know, sides every morning, and. Mm -hmm. uh, you kind of work on those in the morning. Do you have a technique that you use? I feel like not really. Nothing's. But oh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I do like to juggle to help me memorize. Go. Okay, oh, so tell me goodness. how that works in your brain. So you are juggling and. I don't know if it's just like the repetition of it that sort of helps so it. Show me how you, how you do it. Oh, gosh. Okay. That's okay. Oh, now I'm nervous. No, I know. No, there's no pressure. Okay, this is amazing. You're very, very good. You're very good. I, I can't believe the lights. <laughs> no, but you're yeah. Very, so you're thinking of the lines as you're doing yeah, it? Yeah, usually I'm kind of just in my trailer, just going over the lines, and I don't know, maybe it's just kind of... Do people watch you when you do it, or are you, like, private? Not usually. It's yeah, kind of just... Private. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited. so excited. By yeah. the way, this is such a fun moment in your career, and we feel so lucky that we got to have your very oh, yeah. first television so, interview. Thank you so much. Well, we're so proud of you. It's Congratulations. on it. Very likable. You know you watch or you <laughs> like her. <laughs> Well, that was cool. We appreciate hearing from Lola. We should mention the, re the summer I turned pretty is available on Prime 
video. All right, speaking of buzzy shows, Stranger Things star Sadie Sink brings us into the Upside Down. Next. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to go really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. It's a can't miss summer on today. They are walking strong, elegant, and pretty easy to prepare. How to cut costs on your vacation. Vicki has the answers. Every single thing you need for the best summer yet. Only on today. Uvalde, Texas, a small town that has become yet another landmark. How long do you think it took for all this damage to occur? Can you tell us what, what it was like? With our NBC News exclusive. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. And welcome back to Pop Star Plus. Sadie Sink has returned as Max Mayfield in the hit show Stranger Things, and she gave Hoda and Justin Sylvester a recap on what it was like to bring these dark episodes to life. As soon as the final two episodes of Stranger Things season four dropped, Netflix crashed and caused a whole bunch of havoc for diehard yes. fans. I had to call in a favor to watch it. And this just in, the latest season of the hit series just hit a major milestone, topping one billion hours of viewing. Okay, well, front and center is this season is Max. It's played by the very talented Sadie Sink. Max is being targeted by the evil Thank you. Oh, yeah. So she has to come up with a plan to keep up from taking over her mind. Let's take a look. I just need to push him away, find a happy memory, and hide there. Hide in the light. You got a memory in mind? Yeah. It was a time when I was... I mean, okay, first of all, Sadie, hi. hi. Secondly, <laughs> Justin's mad at you because he missed part of his vacation in Mexico because he yes. was watching your show. I'm sorry. Watching your I show. I'm sorry before, I'm still sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but you were shocked because you didn't know about the billion views. No, I just found out this morning that Netflix crashed, apparently. Yeah, it crashed. No one like, told me. That's, yes. that's wild. Now, what I love about you is not only are you a star of the show, but you are like an avid viewer of the show. You enjoy it just like the rest. Yeah, because, I mean, I watched, my character didn't come on until season two, so I watched season one in, like, a day and was a huge fan. Oh. So even though I know what happens in the show, I still watch it. I'm, like, so excited to watch it every year. It's so crazy because there's a lot of Emmy buzz around this show, but Winona Ryder yes. has been praising your acting <laughs> skills. You? She called you a young Meryl Streep. <laughs> we hate to say, I, it, come on. Gotta say I, it. No, I, I, that's that's too big of a comparison to make, I think. But I, I mean, Winona's incredible, and she's so amazing to work with and to have as kind of like a role model for us kids. So to hear her like supporting us in the show in that way, that means a lot. Oh my! How old are you? I'm 20. Like you are. I had to think about it. I'm, I'm you know 20. What I love you. Come from a family of how many? How many siblings do you have? I'm one of five one kids. Of five. Yeah. And another one of your siblings is an actor as yes. well. Yes. What does your What do your parents think, or when they mm -hmm. watch you? Yeah. What is that like for them to see you blossom? 
I mean, it was always me and my brother Mitchell, like we were, we were just kind of like the weird kids who would like make our family like, you know, sit down and watch her like 10 minute long productions that we'd like <laughs> yeah. choreograph and direct together. Um, but then it actually, I think we just took it a little too far or something. <laughs> but like our parents um, are incredibly supportive, our whole family really, and I think it, you know, me going through it with my brother yeah. really helped. Yeah. It was because yeah. it was like the two of us, together. two of us together. For sure. So, yeah. But how do you guys, because I know a lot of siblings who are in the entertainment business, yeah. they get a little competitive. <laughs> like, and they get a little jealous. How do you guys just yeah. stay grounded and, yeah. and, and stay in that team mentality? It, I don't think there's never been any uh, competitiveness between us at all. Mm -hmm. We're very supportive of each other. Um, so yeah, he's, you know, he's my best friend in the world, so. Aww. Yeah. Okay, can we talk about Taylor Swift? Yes. Okay, you adore her. Mm -hmm. She chose you to be in her video. That's incredible. How did Crazy. you, how did you get the phone call and tell us about that moment? Well, I just, I, I didn't think it was real at first. Um, I guess she was a fan of the show and then had me in mind for the All Too Well video. And so she reached out and um, I was like, of course I'll do it. And what was it like hanging out with her? Did you get invited to the 4th of July party? <laughs> I've there? heard about these 4th of July parties. Um, you know, she's such a grounded, um, genuine person. So to have someone like that, that I can look up to, like, it, what's I your, really your go-to Taylor song that you love? Ooh, um, <sighs> right now it's August. Yeah, that's a great, that's, that's a good a one. Great song. That is a good one. But I want to know, because that's a good question, but in the show, yeah. When you go to Ve when Vecna comes for you, yeah. you have to play this song. Yes. Running up the hill by Kate Bush mm -hmm. is like the jam. But if you had to choose one song, yeah. to get out of that nightmare, which one would you choose? Because mine would be Push It by Salt and Pepper. Okay? <laughs> That's good. I get around for a lot of people with Push It going on. Yeah, I mean, I've been saying August. Yeah. Um, also, this is uh, Instant Crush by Daft Punk would be a oh, good one for me. Daft yeah, Punk a is good a good one. one. What's yours? Mm -hmm. Um, what would I do? I would probably do, jeez. Bad girls. Talking about bad girls, bad girls. Talking about bad You were like, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> By the way, you're incredible. Oh, thank you. Congratulations, Congratulations on all of your success. We're so happy for you. Thank you so, so much. So beautiful. What an impressive young lady. What a popular show. So thanks, Sadie. We should mention that you can find volume four of Stranger Things on Netflix, but something tells me you already knew that. Coming up, we've got a glimpse of Harrison Ford during his Raiders of the Lost Ark days that you're going to not want to miss. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Man, is this? Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. It's a can't-miss summer on today. Ah! They are walking strong, elegant, and pretty easy to prepare. How to cut costs on your vacation. Vicki has the answers. Every single thing you need for the best summer yet. Only on today. Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Welcome back. Harrison Ford is unmistakable as Indiana Jones ahead of his milestone 80th birthday. We thought we'd take a little look back here at him discussing Raiders of the Lost Ark, his first film where he stars as the adventuring archaeologist. And he did this right here on Today back in 1981. Take a look. A great deal of it uh, comes comes from from the actor or from me in this case. Uh, and it doesn't always happen that way unless there's a there's the right atmosphere and there's a unless the director wants that input 
the actor's capable of giving it and the circumstances are correct for them to work together. Uh, and in this case, that was certainly true. It was a very collaborative feeling uh, between Stephen and I. Harrison is contributing so much to the writing of the script, to the story, to just the general feeling of the film. He's, he's, he probably, I'm not going to get too superlative here because I work with some incredibly inventive actors, but he's one of the most inventive actors I've ever worked with who deals on a level that is so human and so identifiable. His ideas are all of our ideas. There's great precedent for reinventing things in the, in the movie business. And as much as, as, they're, as they are based on, at least in these guys' minds, on, on uh, certain efforts from the past, they themselves have made something totally new. God, it's really cool to see that all these years later. Happy early birthday to you, Mr. Ford. All right, another Pop Star Plus for you. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you again tomorrow. So long. everybody today all day is up and operational <laughs> welcome to the little digital show we call today in 30. yeah it's our half hour wrap up of everything from our show this morning starting with the race to save california's giant sequoia trees which are thousands of years old our miguel almaguerras are on the front line where firefighters are working around the clock and are making progress and mr roker has the forecast they're facing in the coming days and then we're going to take a look at this picture take a real good look it's the first image from nasa's most powerful and most expensive telescope we're going to break down exactly what you're looking at there and why this is really just the beginning. All that, plus it is one of the biggest days for shoppers. We're talking Prime Day. Okay, so our team searched Amazon high and low, found all the best deals, and they're going to share their favorite picks with you. So let's get our hands on those deals, and let's wind the clock up. 30 minutes. It's a countdown. It's on Today, Today in 30. 30. Let us start with NBC national correspondent Miguel Almaguer. He's on the front lines in Yosemite. Good morning, Miguel. Hi, guys. Good morning. The southern entrance here at Yosemite National Park remains shut down. Park officials are actually asking that we stay in this area at this hour because just down the road from here, the fire is actively burning and trees are falling into the roadway. Now, the good news, those Sequoia Giants, for the most part, have been undamaged. None of them have been destroyed. And as you mentioned, this fire is now about a quarter contained. Firefighters doing all they can to protect these majestic beauties. This morning, a race to save one of Earth's natural treasures. Extreme heat and low humidity fueling the Washburn Fire in Yosemite National Park, home to hundreds of iconic towering sequoia trees. When you see fire conditions like this, what's the biggest threat here? Uh, we're just trying to keep the fire from climbing the trees. More than 500 firefighters trying to protect these giants, clearing bone dry vegetation and running sprinklers to keep flames at bay. The firefight here is literally going treetop to treetop. This crew is trying to put out hot spots before it jumps to the other side of the fire break. Fire's edge is active. The fire's outer rim forcing the closure of Yosemite's popular south entrance and the evacuation of some 1,600 people from nearby homes and hotels. The famed Mariposa Grove is a top tourist spot for its sequoias, some of the tallest and oldest trees on the planet. The iconic grizzly giant first began sprouting a thousand years BC. Sequoias here can easily stand up to 200 feet tall, higher than Italy's leaning Tower of Pisa. These trees long celebrated as natural wonders. During the Civil War, President Abraham Lincoln first signed landmark legislation to protect them. Presidents Taft and Roosevelt posing in front of their massive trunks. 
Although sequoias have adapted to survive flames, they're no match for modern wildfires, driven by climate change and extreme drought. 20% of giant sequoias have been lost in the last two years alone. We've lost more giant sequoia trees in the past, I think it's 15 years, than in, uh, in history. Now firefighters doing all they can to save centuries of trees from this growing inferno. So Miguel, it's nice to see that firefighters are making progress, but they do still have concerns. What's their biggest concern this morning? Well, Hoda, the piece of good news out here is they've been doing prescribed burns in this general area for years to exactly do this, protect those giant sequoias from fires that are part of nature out here. But they've also have a bark beetle infestation, which has killed millions of trees across northern and southern California. That is fueling the fire. So those two items are keeping firefighters on their toes here. They are making progress, but there remains some threat here in Yosemite Valley. Hoda, back to you. All right, Miguel Almaguer for us there. Miguel, thank you. Well, weather's going to be the big mm -hmm. X factor out there. Al, uh, we turn to you. What are we looking at? Well, take a look. This is the plume, the smoke forecast from the Washburn fire. This thing extends like 200 miles. And the big problem is the humidity levels. It's bone dry, 15 to 25 percent. The winds, not bad, 5 to 15 miles per hour, but hot, dry conditions through this week. So heavy smoke and poor air quality in that region. Plus the heat, 36 million of us stretching from the northwest all the way into Texas and parts of the lower Mississippi River Valley for heat advisories and heat warnings. Today, triple-digit temperatures, air temperatures, Dallas, Memphis, uh, we're looking at Houston, but the heat index is triple digits there, all the way to uh, Raleigh-Durham, 98. It's going to feel like 103 in Jacksonville. Here in the Northeast, New York City, going to feel like 94 degrees. That'll last one more day. Out West, again, triple digits for Vegas, Salt Lake City, down in Del Rio, Texas, and Dallas again, and that warmth will continue right on into the weekend for Chicago, Cincinnati, Boston, down into Charlotte. Plus, we have a risk of severe weather from Presque Isle all the way down to Charleston. We're talking 33 million people at risk for wind gusts, isolated hail, and we could see a tornado, or tornado or two, guys. We are getting a stunning brand new view, very first time on just how big our universe is. So NASA, NASA is unveiling the first full color image from the James Webb Space Telescope. It's the most powerful, the largest telescope, the most expensive wow. telescope uh, ever launched into yeah, space. They call it the Gucci telescope. NBC's Tom <laughs> Costello joins us now with this exciting event. This is years in the making and by years we mean like billions of years, right yeah. Tom? Yeah, that's right. Space geeks, you have an excuse to geek out this morning. These are the, the highest, deepest resolution, infrared resolution images ever of our universe. So take a look what we're talking about here. Last night, NASA and the White House unveiling the first cosmic image. It, it shows a kaleidoscope of galaxies as they appeared 4.6 billion years ago, light years ago. Now, we're looking at images now, and that astronomer Neil deGrasse Tyson says, if you look at the spiked objects, uh, those are local stars. Everything else out there is a galaxy, thousands of them. Many actually distort into arcs. And NASA this morning releasing even more images on a live video stream one by one. They're going to show, and they are showing a full color spectrum of an exoplanet, the life cycle of stars, how galaxies interact. Uh, and as we mentioned, the Webb telescope uses infrared eyes to pull these faint and very distant objects like stars and galaxies into sharp focus. Focus. The question is, will it discover signs of life out there? We'll take a look and look for all of it over the coming hours. Guys, back to you. Mm -hmm. wow. Tom, so happy. Oh, cool. yeah. That's really cool, Tom. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks. It's not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts.
These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to you today. we got a lot to celebrate yes. on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it! For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We are back. Extra special edition of Today Bestsellers today and this morning, marking the start of Amazon Prime Day, which means it is time to start shopping. Shop Today editorial director Adriana Brock is here to share the hottest deals of this two-day event. Huge discounts on everything from tech to beauty. You can scan the QR code on your screen if you want to see Adriana's picks and the whole Today team. Like I say, shopping so we don't have to. You've got the good stuff. Exactly. And some of the good stuff right now that's on sale are Amazon devices. Okay. So the Amazon Fire Stick is really great. An easy way to upgrade your TV viewing experience so that you can get more entertainment. What is it? How does so it work? Basically, it's you plug this in and you can stream over 200,000 channels mm. and apps. So you could do everything from Peacock to Netflix, watch your broadcast TV. It is $11.99 right now, and it's 60% off, which is so low. Wow. For the entry level HD. Now, if you want a top of the line, you've got Wi Fi 6, you've got mesh routers around the home, you want something a little bit more cinematic and faster and smoother, you want to get the 4K Max, which is on sale right now for uh, $34.99. So, okay. also on sale. Fire sticks are huge right now. Okay, what do we have here? Okay, another device from Amazon that's super popular is the Kindle Paperwhite, which is under $100 right now at $94.99. And what's really great is that they have a bunch of other Kindles on sale, but this is the best value. It's the number one best-selling e-reader, mm -hmm. and it's great because it's water-resistant. It's got the backlight that's warm, so you can like read all your favorite books day to night. Okay. It looks like paper. One of my favorite things about an e-reader, especially the Kindle, is that you don't get the distractions from your phone or your tablet. Yeah, big time. So you can really focus, take time to yourself. So if you've been wanting an e-reader, today's the day to get it. Okay, $94.99. Yes. AirPods, that is always a big yes. seller. I'm always losing them, so this Everyone's is the time always to snatch losing them. them. And if you've been on the fence about getting a new pair, today's the day. The second generation, which is a wired charger style, they are on sale for $89.99 right now. 30% off, but the biggest deal right now is on the AirPods Pro, which rarely go on sale. This is the lowest price we've seen since around November 2020, down to $169.99. That's 31% off. Okay, so, so you, this is like the, the older version. The second generation, and the Pro, you get the wireless charging, you get active noise canceling, mm. and they're water resistant. Okay. And you get the silicone tip, so you get like a better fit, yep. more customized. Okay, great, and that's yeah. the price. Air fryers, from AirPods to air fryers. Yes. Good segue. We cannot get enough of air fryers. Yeah. They are always on sale, but this Chefman right now is $84.99. That's 39% off. What's really great is that it's an air fryer and an oven in one. Oh. And it's got three racks, so it's a it's vertical. You could see all your food. You can cook a delicious meal so much faster because you don't need to preheat. You yeah. pop it in. It also comes with a rotisserie spit if you're into that. Whoa. And a basket, so you can batch air fry. People are you super into the air fryer. I yes. can't say I haven't learned the air fryer yeah, lesson yet. You can also yet. dehydrate fruits and veggies in here if you want to make on-the-go snacks. So it's a multifunctional device that also has presets. So it's just like you touch a button and it does all the work. Eighty-four for you. ninety-nine. Yes. That's a big discount. Yes. Yeah. Down thirty-nine percent. Okay. All right. Yes. Let's get into some hair products. Okay. I'm so excited about this. Luxury beauty rarely goes on sale, but we found two deals from two brands today. Com readers really love. First is Color Wow. It's the one minute transformation mask. This is a great product because you use it on dry hair. It helps smooth frizz, oh. boost shine, all in a minute with no heat. So it's like you leave it on. You you kind of work it into your hair. Yeah. It's kind of like a fake DIY blowout in okay. one minute. Oh. Yeah, and you okay. can use it on all hair types, all lengths. It looks so great. Okay. And if you really want to take your beauty routine to the next level, Olaplex is on sale too. That's you, that's a good deal. It you is. never get Olaplex exactly, on sale. and you never get it on sale. And it's a great treatment, sort of like a hair routine. Mm -hmm. So you want to get number three, which I know a lot of people here love. Number three is an amazing bond building uh, product. 
product, and it's down to $22.40 right now, 25% okay. off. You use this um, right before you shampoo and condition, and what's really great I've is that it helps. Before. It does it. It makes it kind of smooth and it, pretty. Yes. you got to leave it on. you got to have a minute. You have to leave it in, yeah. and what it really does is repairs your hair from the inside. So yeah. it's building up those bonds that are broken from all the damage. And if you want to really amp it up, get the shampoo and conditioner. They're okay. all under $25. All right. I love it, Adriana. <laughs> thank you. Remember, if you want to get these deals, you can scan the QR code you see there. You could also text SHOP to 34318. If you want to get those products, you can also go to today.com slash prime day and check out all the deals available, including hundreds of the hottest items and best discounts today and tomorrow. Now, this segment solely features products available on Amazon, which, guess what, has an affiliate relationship with today. So all the legalese has been read. Hallie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to you today. we got a lot to celebrate yes. on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it! The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Welcome back to you today. We've got a lot to celebrate on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it! It's a can't-miss summer on today. They are walking strong, elegant, and pretty easy to prepare. How to cut costs on your vacation. Vicki has the answers. Every single thing you need for the best summer yet. Only on today. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. Welcome back to you today. We've got a lot to celebrate on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it! Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Long summer days mean there's lots of time for activities and fam with friends and family. But sometimes finding things to do that everyone agrees on can be tough. Oh, that's never happened, especially while sticking to a budget. So we got some help first. NBC News senior consumer investigative correspondent Vicki Wynn is here with some fun and affordable ways to keep our families entertained this summer. Good morning. Hey, Vicki. Morning. Hey, so uh, you've got... Uh, some free streaming recommendations that uh, actually give free access to these sites and, and, and their content. Yeah, Al, this is super interesting, and it is free. You will have to sit through some ads, but I'm going to tell you about this new sector called AVOD, and what it stands for is Advertiser Supported video on demand. These are new platforms and the best way to engage with them is just to download these apps I'm about to tell you uh, and then just experiment. See what content they offer. It's movies, shows, marathon viewings. See what speaks to you. But the major ones are Pluto TV, Roku, Tubi and Zumo, which is owned by our parent company, Comcast. I don't know how they come up with these names, but that's what they do. They brought in $19 billion in revenue this year, so they are here to stay because it is a growing industry. Uh, on Pluto TV, you can see things like Totally Turtles, which is a channel dedicated to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They also <laughs> carry MTV reality shows and uh, S South Park, which is a popular one. On Roku, you can expect to see movies like John Wick and Expendables 4. They're also reviving Kevin Hart's comedy series, Die Hard which was a casualty of Quibi, R.I.P. Uh, Tubi has the Freak Brothers with Pete Davidson, as well as Crackle Plus, a lot of comedy features. And then a shameless self-plug here. On Zumo, you can see Morgan Radford and me, yours truly, every day from 11 to 1 for our NBC News Now newscast, which streams live. It's on a number of different platforms, Zumo being one of them. If that's not for you, you can also watch The Walking Dead Marathon or telenovelas. When I tell you there is literally something for everyone on these new platforms, 
That's what I'm talking about. Another so, platform. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. So confused. And, <laughs> I like, well, it is confusing and a lot of streaming shows to watch. But what I thought was always so cool as a kid is we went to drive in movies oh. and that was the coolest thing. And they're sort of coming back now, right? Totally, Jill. Sun's out. It's time to get out. So if you don't want to be at home streaming, I've got three words for you. Rooftop Cinema Club. This is happening in a lot of major cities like Houston, Miami, New York, Chicago, San Diego, just to name a few. But Rooftop Cinema Club, look it up. It's exactly what it sounds like. You're outdoors. You're on a rooftop somewhere, usually with access to a full menu and a bar. It's a great way to take in a movie. And then you talked about drive-in movies. There's a website called driveinmovie.com to help you locate a theater near you. They made a big comeback during the pandemic when everyone wanted some space. Uh, safe way to enjoy a movie. You just want to make sure you bring cash, a lot of cash only, and also make sure that it is still open. Now, from museums, uh, from movies to museums, let's talk about the free museums that are really in every single state in our beautiful nation. There's an organization called Museums for All, and they uh, give free or reduced admission to more than 900 different museums. And this is for folks who are on SNAP benefits, so it's zero to three dollars. If you are a customer of Wells Fargo or Bank of America, you have free museum days. And in a lot of communities, the museums will also offer certain days for free to their community locals as well. So that's something to look into. Uh, and don't forget about your street markets and fairs. This is a great time to go get some fresh produce, support your local farmers and artists. And the bonus tip here, state fairs. A lot of those open up in August, but you can get a discount by buying your tickets ahead. And sometimes they even offer a, a summer pass. So if you plan to go to the state fair more than once, get one of those passes to save money. Fried things on a stick. I love that. <laughs> All right. And, uh, you exactly. know, Sunday is National Ice Cream Day. Where can we get some free ice cream? All right, Dylan, this uh, was established back in 1984 by President Ronald Reagan. He said July, National Ice Cream Month, and the third Sunday of July is going to be National Ice Cream Day. Quick pop quiz for you three. Okay. How many gallons of ice cream do you think the average American eats in one year? And I'll make it easy for you with multiple choice. Two gallons, four gallons, or eight gallons of ice cream per eight. year? Eight. Four. I think eight. Me too. Al's right. It is four. four. I tricked you. Gallons. That's according to census.com. Four gallons is 20 pounds of ice cream that we Jeez. down every wow. year. So yeah, if you want to get your ice cream over fix, 365 days, it's not And like Al is president of the Random Fact Club, so we're never going to get those right. <laughs> I know, I don't will not want to play Al in Trivial Pursuit. Never. But let's put up the uh, places where you can get your free ice cream on Sunday. So Baskin Robbins, from Sunday to the following Saturday, you get $5 off a $15 purchase. Dairy Queen and Cold Stone, you have to download their app, and then they're going to surprise you with what the deals are. And we know that Carvel um, on July Yum. 17th this Sunday... You can buy one, get one free, small cup or cone of Brookie Soft Serve. And the freebies don't end there. This is courtesy of uh, Greeny. He says on Wednesday, you can get a free large French fry at McDonald's because it is National French Fry Day. And by the way, right after this show mm -hmm. from 10 to 12, Subway Sandwiches is offering free sandwiches. They're going to give away oh, wow. 1 million free sandwiches. <clears throat> to celebrate their uh, biggest menu change in 60 oh, the years. the Subway Series. And the last freebie. Mm. <laughs> That's right. Krispy Kreme turns 85 on Friday. Wow. You can get a dozen uh, Krispy Kremes for 85 cents. That's fantastic. And I'm losing wow. my voice. So I'm sorry. Right. Let you go. Thank you, Vic. By the way, we'll Greeny is our, our senior producer, uh, Matthew Green, Greenfield. So we love, we love yes. Greeny. Yeah, right. we love Greeny. Okay, all right. Thank, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I, I cough up his name, too. That's okay. Thank you. <laughs> To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Uvalde, Texas, a small town that has become yet another landmark. How long do you think it took for all this damage to occur? 
you tell us what, what it was like? With our NBC News exclusive. My name is Lester. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Since 1987, America has known Dave Coulier as Uncle Joey, starring alongside John Stamos and Bob Saget in the beloved sitcom Full House, and of course later, Fuller House. And now Dave is back on TV in a new comedy called Live and Local. He plays a popular radio host who has to navigate getting along with his co-workers. Take a look. But if it bit bombs, it doesn't make you a bad person. Just let it drift away on the proverbial airwaves of morning radio. Okay, two sugars and one stevia. 175 degrees? Uh, yeah, that's like 175, 176. You should be good. I was kidding. <laughs> live and local. <laughs> this is live and I'm local. Um, it was so good to see you. Thank you so much. You know, it's so much fun. I was telling you in the commercial that the legacy of Full House has just gone on to this whole new generation. My nine-year-old is obsessed with it. Isn't All of her that, friends watch it. That, I love it's... hearing that. I love it, you know, that parents can enjoy it with their kids. It's, it's video comfort food. Kids really feel comfortable there. You know, there's a certain family chemistry that we didn't know we were inventing at the time. We were just trying to do the best shows we could. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it lives on, and it's it's so fun hearing those kind of stories. Did you know initially, like, we have gold here? No. Or, you didn't? <laughs> I don't think anybody really? ever really knows. We were just trying to do the best shows we could. Yeah. And then it went out there, and then we started hearing all of that wonderful family feedback. Our kids feel safe here yeah. watching this I show. I think part of the magic of the show was just how nice and amazing people were off camera. And yeah. that brings us to Bob Saget, who yeah. some people just knew him from the show or as a comedian. But after his passing, we learned so yes. much more about yeah. what he was really like. Yeah, I met Bob when I was 18 years old. I was a stand-up comic for two weeks. Mm. And I was playing a little tiny club in Detroit. It was just a little bar, you know. And Bob came in on a comedy store tour with two other comedians. They were just looking for stage time for their show. And so he went up on stage, and he just crushed it. And I said, boy, that's what I want to be right there. Yeah. I want to be that good. And I talked to him after the show, and he said, well, here's my number. When you come out to L.A., give me a call. I called him, Wait. and he said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm just here in L.A. He goes, well, come on over. And I went over to his apartment in Palms, California, and Gary Shandling was there. Oh, my gosh. So Wait, the three what? of us, yeah, the three of us just hung out, became instant brothers, and then I slept on Bob's couch because I was between apartments. Yeah. And then Full House happens years later, and Joey moves into Danny Tanner's okay. house and sleeps on the couch. Wow. Art wow. imitating life. And Crazy. I think that was what people loved, too, is that I know that y'all really were a family off yeah. camera, yeah. too. Yeah. And that you could lean on, all of you, could lean mm. on each other when you lost somebody you love so much. It's a special family. Not many TV shows become a family off camera yeah. as well. And we really did. We really, you know, didn't just say we loved each other on camera. We spent so much time together. And we've been through everything, Mary marriages, divorces, births, deaths, yeah. uh, cancellations, pickups, everything, mm -hmm. you name it, we've been through it. You went through two recent passings, your dad and your brother, and I think that would be crippling for most people to even figure out how to, how to move forward. How have you found the strength to move forward? Well, my brother and my dad were very funny people. And so I have this, uh, I love those pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, I have this tremendous well, and whenever it feels like the well is drying up with sadness, I have so many laughs and so many mm. funny stories between Bob, my dad, and my brother that mm. I just kind of pour them back in the well and relive all those wonderful mm. experiences. It's beautiful. You've also been really brave and speaking about your sobriety. Mm -hmm. And I, I know that all of us have been inspired mm -hmm. by- Thank you. It's really important, I think, for people to talk talk about their journey so that other people know mm. they're not alone. And you've said that being sober during this hard time has been the best gift. That's interesting. Y you know, it, it has been. And I always equated alcohol with a good time. I'm a mm -hmm. child of the 60s, yeah. and mm -hmm. the parents were drinking, and everybody yeah. was having a great time. So by the time I became a teenager, I just said, I want to have fun, too, mm -hmm. just like all the parents. So 
when it started having diminishing returns for me and it started to affect relationships, not only with my friends, but with my wife, she was mm -hmm. very concerned. I started to take a deep look at myself and peel away the layers. And, uh, you know, thank goodness I was sober during my brother, my dad, and Bob because it really helped me go through a really tough time where I had to be in touch with the rawness of those yes. feelings again. Mm -hmm. So um, if someone can see their story in me, because I'm just, I have a very simple operating system. I like <laughs> riding around on my tractor and playing <laughs> hockey. Um, if someone can see a little bit of themselves in me, then maybe I can help one person. And I love that. Yeah. You still yeah. play hockey with, a, with, your, with your buddies? I do. You're, uh, you're welcome to come 7 a.m. Uh, <laughs> you know, really and watch do. us. Wow. That's 7 a.m.? That's our backyard. Uh, we live on Lake St. Clair, and that's a canal behind our home. What? And uh, we've had some Hall of Famers wow. skate. Larry Murphy uh, uh, has come over and skated, and, and we have wonderful games out there, and I still play. Uh, every Saturday, and oh, cool. I get to play with a buddy of mine who played in the How NHL, awesome John that? Blum. Yeah, wow. So. Okay, we got to talk live and local. Yeah. It's Thanks. So, so yeah. much fun. You play a radio host. I do. Talk, talk, talk about wh that, why this project drew you to it. Mm -hmm. Well, it is live. We have guests just like this, and you know your interviews can go a million right. ways. Yeah. You, know, you know, so that part to me was very intriguing, and being able to be funny. And there's a faith-based element to the show, which I was concerned at first. I said, is that going to slow the comedy down? It doesn't at all. It actually enhances, enhances the show. And so, you know, there's been a lot of crabby uh, radio hosts along the way that I've met. You know, those guys, there's not enough sugar in the world to make yeah. this coffee better. Yeah. <clears throat> you ready, Dave? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Dave Coulier is my next guest. Yeah. All right. You know, so it's those guys that I kind of pulled from. Well, yeah. you can so awesome. catch Dave in live and local. It is streaming now on Pure Flix. Dave, thank, thank you, Dave. So We're so happy to see you. To see you. All right. Hope you like that. You're going to love tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Craig's going one on one with Jordan Peele. And don't forget Lizzo. She's swinging by our plaza on Friday. Can't miss it. Have a great Tuesday, guys. Buongiorno today all day. Who doesn't love Italian food? Well, up next on Hashtag Cooking, Saba is putting her own spin on two classic Italian dishes. First, a crispy breaded eggplant that's baked not deep fried and gluten free. Then she whips up a vegan version of a classic pasta dish. Oh yeah, manja. So when I said cacio e pepe, really I meant cashew e pepe. Huh? Am I the only one who loves at my own jokes? <laughs> All hail Italian food. I love it. Some traditional Italian dishes do have a lot of dairy, so I wanted to create some of my favorites with a plant-based twist. Today I'm going to show you how to make a breaded eggplant that uses almond meal instead of breadcrumbs in a really delicious and creamy vegan cacio e pepe. This is hashtag Sama's Italian. Eggplant is a vegetable I kind of tend to forget about the second it enters my kitchen. So, to use up all of my forgotten eggplant that I've been finding in my fridge, I wanted to create something that had the breading of an eggplant parm, but the snackability of something like a slice of bruschetta. So, enter my breaded eggplant. The first thing that we're gonna do is slice our eggplant. Got a cute eggplant here. Just gonna trim the end off. And start slicing. Here's a little tip. You don't actually need to salt your eggplant. Traditionally, you'd salt your eggplant to get rid of that bitterness, but nowadays, the bitterness has been bred out of eggplant. I'm slicing my eggplant into little slices that are about a quarter of an inch thick. Perfect. So happy I'm using up my forgotten eggplant. It's just been sitting in there for so long. Okay. I'm gonna let my eggplant hang out here while I make my little egg mixture. I wanted my breading to have a lot of flavor on its own, so in addition to my almond meal, I'm gonna add some of my favorite spices. I'm using almond meal or unblanched almond flour for this recipe, which still keeps the skin on the almonds. I find that this is really nice to add texture and it's a great replacement for breadcrumbs. The cayenne is gonna add a little heat and the turmeric and cumin are my favorite pairing. We cannot forget our salt and pepper. What is life without some salt and pepper? 
It'd be very unseasoned and boring. Little salt and some freshly ground black pepper. I like that the turmeric is also gonna add some nice yellow color to this eggplant. Just gonna whisk this until it's nice and well combined. I want the breading to be really flavorful and so I'm mixing it super well so no piece of eggplant goes unseasoned. That would be really sad. Also super bold of me to wear a white shirt when I'm using turmeric. This is how I live on the edge, okay? Beautiful. The breading is happy. Now time to beat an egg. We wanna whisk the egg until it's completely uniform. We don't want any separation between the yolk and the white. This looks nice and uniform. A perfect little bath for my eggplant. Now it's time to assemble. This eggplant has really been on a journey from being forgotten in the fridge to going down the line to flavor. I mean, lucky eggplant though. We wanna dip it straight in this egg mixture. Make sure it's really well coated. Now we don't want any excess egg on the eggplant. So I'm just gonna let it drip out just like this. We want a really nice and even coating of the breading, which is why we're doing this. And now we're gonna put it straight into our breading. Into the parchment paper we go. Now we're just gonna repeat. This is a way better fate for your eggplant than the trash, I'm just saying. Last one, getting a little emotional. Don't worry about those guys though, I promise I will bread them later. We are ready for the oven. Look at those colors, look so pretty. I'm popping these in at 375 degrees for 30 minutes, make sure to flip them halfway through. I think we all need to take a moment just to look at the color alone. Look at that yellow from the turmeric, the little golden crispness on the edges. I'm like drooling already, I really can't wait to eat them. These are perfect on their own, honestly, because they have so much flavor in the breading, but I love to use them as a vehicle for my toppings of choice. This could be a bruschetta, this could be a pesto, even just a little tahini drizzle with some salt is so good. Today, I'm gonna use a bruschetta and a pesto. By the way, you can make your own for sure, but if you wanna buy store-bought too, totally fine with me. Again, what a bold choice of me to cook with turmeric and wear white. Like, I love taking risks. Okay, I'm gonna add some pesto. Spread that on really nicely. These would make a great app or a side at your next party, or even if you're just partying by yourself. They'd make a great appetizer for you. That's fine. We love that. We love a party of one. These are even good dipped in some marinara sauce, just keeping it super simple. There's so much you can do with them. They taste good with basically everything. For my bruschetta. And because everything is better with a little salt, I'm gonna add some flaky sea salt on top. It's gonna taste really good. It's gonna add a little bit more saltiness, but it's also gonna look really pretty too. Just a little. You know, this eggplant, this middle one, it's not sure what it wants. So it's gonna get both. <laughs> Whoever gets this piece, that's the lucky person at the party. I'm cracking myself up, okay. Uh, okay, great. Can't forget a little salt on here. This screams, you need to take a picture of me. So I'm gonna listen. And again, feel free to use whatever toppings you want. This is truly very customizable. 
to your liking and your flavor inclination. Or whatever you see at the store that you're like, mm, that looks good, I'm gonna put that on my breaded eggplant. I support you. Even hummus, I just thought of that, even hummus. That's what I'm gonna chop this with next time. Okay, I for sure got the shot. I got like 15, to be real with you. So now I'm gonna try one. Okay, I'm gonna go for it with this little guy right here. Okay, I'm ready. I hope you're ready. Mmm, so good. I'm serving this at my next party. Even if it's just me, I'm just gonna serve it to myself. I deserve it. This was so yummy. And look what we created. The colors of an Italian flag. I mean, come on, look at that. So cute. A question are you dairy free and miss the glory days of really creamy cheesy pastas well you're in luck because my next recipe my vegan cacio e pepe has you completely covered i'm gonna go get the ingredients uvalde texas a small town that has become yet another landmark how long do you think it took for all this damage to occur? Can you tell us what, what it was like? With our NBC News exclusive. Cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, top story with Tom Hamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? Okay, Miss Lester. Hey, who's this? Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Cacio e Pepe is one of those dishes that everyone is obsessed with. But if you can't tolerate dairy, it's probably not high on your list. Don't worry though, I'm going to change that because this vegan Cacio e Pepe is truly going to blow your mind. First up, we're going to make our cashew parmesan. And yes, I did say cashew parmesan. To make this parm, we're using a base of cashews, raw cashews, and nutritional yeast for that savory, nutty, cheesy flavor. I'm going to start by adding my raw cashews into my blender. Make sure your cashews are raw and unsalted. Now for our nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast is commonly used as a vegan cheese substitute because it's got this savory, nutty, cheesy flavor. A little bit of umami in there too. Make sure you buy the fortified version because that's the one that has a lot of vitamins and minerals. Now we need some spices. We've got to have a little seasoning. So, got some salt. Salt going in. and some garlic powder. Now, all we're gonna do, because my blender is truly my best friend, is blend it all up. Be careful though not to over blend. We just wanna blitz it a little bit so we get a nice fine powder, sort of like a Parmesan. And that's perfect, that took less than 10 seconds. Let me show you what it looks like. It smells so good, it's cheesy, it's nutty, it's savory. It's kind of like a nice fine powder, perfect for sprinkling on top of pasta. This makes a little bit more than I'll need for this recipe, so you can totally store this in the fridge for up to a week. Top your popcorn with it, some salads, it's very versatile. And you know what? I'm gonna make my sauce in this blender too, so I'm just gonna transfer this out, keep it over here, don't have to wash any more dishes. 
I'm being lazy today and that's okay. I still love myself. This is some hashtag precious Parmesan. Can't waste any of it. So the reason I'm starting with the Parmesan is because the Parm is dry. The sauce is gonna be more creamy and liquidy. So that's why we're doing it in this order. Saving us some time, saving us some washing dishes. Now I'm done with my cashew parm. Time to make the sauce. I'm using soaked cashews to create this sauce. It's gonna make it really creamy, really luscious. When you soak cashews in water, it actually becomes a little bit more pliable and easy to just blend to very delicious sauces and fillings. Just soak them for an hour in hot water. Now I'm just gonna add them to my blender. Come on, you can do it. Because cashews are super buttery, they're really rich, I want something a little acidic and tangy to sort of balance that out. Fresh lemon juice, always. Now I'm gonna add my garlic. I'm using raw garlic here because I want that really punchy flavor. For that really nutty, savory, cheesy flavor, I'm gonna add some nutritional yeast into my sauce. Just adding some salt. And listen, this is a cachoe e pepe. After all, so we have to add some pepper. Freshly ground pepper, always. We want that bite. We want it to be really peppery and delicious and be sharp as well. Whenever I make this recipe, I skip my workout. This is it right here. A lot of pepper is necessary. I'm gonna finish it off with some extra virgin olive oil. And then, to help the blender move, I'm just gonna add a little bit of water, just to get the blender going. You may need to add more water later, but just check the texture of the sauce and then add more as you see fit. It's time to blend. I'm gonna add a little bit more water. I mean, it smells so cheesy already. <gasps> I'm in love. Just a little. It looks so good. Sorry, that was a little dramatic. I have to show you this texture. I'm gonna give it one more good blend. Every time I make this recipe, I've made it so many times, but I'm always so shocked by how creamy it is without any of the dairy. It's magic. It's so good. I don't think it needs anything. Oh my God. Good for me. Okay, let me show you this texture. Oh, it's so peppery. It's like spicy almost, but still super savory and nutty. I love this so much. All right. Can't leave any sauce behind. I love a blender pasta sauce. It's so easy. Throw together, minimal prep, minimal ingredients. Look at how creamy and luscious that is. Sauce is done. Now I'm gonna go cook my pasta. For breaking news in our changing world, Download the NBC News app. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. 
To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now it's time to cook our pasta. I've already got my water boiling, and don't forget, we must salt our pasta water. Hashtag no bland pasta. It's not good. Okay, the water is ready for my pasta. Just so you know, most dry store-bought pastas are vegan, so if you're looking for that, great but make sure you do check the label to make sure the variety you're choosing is. I'm using a vegan and gluten-free chickpea pasta. There's a lot of really great bean alternative pastas out these days, and I like testing all of them out. Let's talk about pasta shape. I am using a spaghetti here as an ode to the original. We've changed a lot of things already, but you know what? We're keeping it OG when it comes to the spaghetti, but you can use your favorite shape. I'm a helicopter pasta parent. <laughs> You really do have to keep watching your pasta, especially if you're using an alternative pasta, like a bean pasta, because if you overcook those for too long, it'll become a little gummy. Pasta is such a comfort food. In my household growing up, my parents would just alternate between making Indian food and pasta. That was like, <laughs> that was all we had. It was Indian food or pasta. All right, I'm feeling good about this one. We're done. We're done. Woo! Here's what I want to do. I want to save some of that starchy water for later to add to the sauce and pasta to help thicken it and bind it. So I'm going to save some of that. Just a little for later. I love being prepared. And now I'm just going to use my tongs and transfer my pasta to my dish. And then I'm just going to mix the sauce all up. I'm really excited about it. This also keeps the starchy water on the pasta. It doesn't have far to go. Spaghetti is so cute. I love it. All pasta is cute. I don't discriminate. I love all pasta. You know what time it is. It's sauce time. Remember this? Remember our old friend, our cacio e pepe sauce from earlier? It's about to meet the pasta of its dreams. Now I'm just gonna add a touch of that pasta water just to help everything mix and combine, get really nice and creamy. Helps the sauce adhere to the pasta. Toss it together. Get the sauce around every single little bit of that spaghetti. It'd be sad if we didn't. And now, time for our cashew parmesan. Ready? I'm gonna mix some in and I'm gonna add some on top as well, just for a little bit of flavor, a little bit of aesthetics. Just like a traditional cacio e pepe, we wanna eat this immediately. We want it to stay hot, stay fresh. So I'm gonna serve this to myself right now. Is this generous? I don't care. Am I just like, are my eyes too big for my stomach? No, 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 you'll want to eat this much, I promise. Okay. I'm gonna cut myself off there. And now, let me just make this look a little pretty with my fork. Twirl this around. And add a little bit of my cashew parm. And by a little bit of my cashew parm, I meant a lot bit of my cashew parm. And, the dish wouldn't be complete without it. 
some freshly ground black pepper. <laughs> okay, I have a vision. I have a vision for a really cute fork twirl photo. I'm gonna work on that. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do a video. I'm gonna do a video today. That's what's, that's what's happening. Okay, ready? Okay, we got the shot. We got it. We got it. And you know what I also got? The perfect little spiral for me to eat. I'm going for it. Mmm. It is so creamy. Like, I want you to know, this is so creamy. It's cheesy. You've got layers of flavor, right? You've got the buttery cashews creating this really creamy sauce. The black pepper makes it peppery, woody. It's got the sharp bite. And then that salty cashew parm, which I'm just gonna add more of for fun, really ties everything together. You really won't believe there's no dairy in this, I promise. Mmm. Oh, and that garlic, though? That fresh garlic, it's so punchy. It makes it smell really good, makes it taste really good. Someone needs to hold me back, because I'll keep talking about this for the whole day. <laughs> this is so delicious. I love creating these really fun plant-based twists on traditional Italian food. It's unique, it's fun, it's inventive, and it's super delicious. But I'm so glad you're here because I have something I want to tell you. Hashtag cooking is back with all new episodes and I'm so excited to share my favorite recipes with you. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. This avocado cream pasta is literally one of my most popular recipes on my blog, and I honestly think it's because you just need a blender to make this super luxurious sauce. So, the base of it is our avocados. I'm using an avocado and a half for this recipe. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with that. All right. We're gonna scoop some of this avocado out. Look at how ripe and pretty that is. Go straight in there. This avocado is what's gonna add that super creamy element to this pasta. Now I'm gonna move on to my lemon, adding the juice of one full lemon in here. Make sure I catch all the seeds. This lemon is gonna really make it tart and acidic and bring out that zing, make it very bright and fresh. I'm gonna add some fresh basil and raw garlic. Yes, I'm using raw. It's gonna be really punchy and really bright. And I love garlic. There we go. 
a little bit of olive oil, just a bit. And now I'm gonna season it to taste with some salt, pepper, and red pepper flakes. Salt in there. Add as much chili flakes as you'd like. I love spice, so I'm going in with a lot. But you make your own choices, okay? Now, just to help everything get moving in the blender, we're gonna add a little bit of cold water. Make sure it's cold because we don't wanna brown the avocado. Just a bit, and I can add more and adjust to get it to the right consistency that I like. Now, it's time to blend. Perfect. It is so luxe, you will not even believe it. Look at that, so creamy. Before I add this creamy sauce to my pasta, I'm gonna grab one more thing. Just grab some arugula from the fridge. I love adding this to this pasta because it gives this really nice peppery bite to it. All right, time to assemble. Got my sauce, gonna add this into my pasta. You might think you put cream in this, but you didn't, I promise. I'm gonna add my tomatoes. Just a little burst of something sweet in with this avocado cream sauce. Now I'm just gonna mix in my arugula. What's great about this pasta as well is that you can eat it immediately, but you can also refrigerate it to have as a pasta salad the next day. We love a leftover. We love a meal prep situation. Is that too much? There's never too much. <laughs> what is a portion? <laughs> some freshly ground black pepper, and a pinch of flaky sea salt. That is it. But one last thing, can't forget to take a photo. I didn't do all of this for nothing. I love this. I'm gonna frame this. I'm gonna put this on my wall. Okay, here I go. Gotta get some arugula, some pasta in there. Okay. I love myself. <laughs> It's so creamy, you honestly would never know that there's no cream or butter in this. It's crazy. Good morning, out of the woods. Encouraging news overnight in that battle to save California's giant sequoias from a raging wildfire. We're live on the front lines where hundreds of firefighters are working around the clock to protect a piece of American history. The heat is on, soaring temperatures moving east with nearly 30 million